Hello and welcome, welcome back to High Rollers. This is the Dungeons and Dragons campaign we run here <laughs> on the Oscast. He's gone. Are you right there? I'm alright, yeah. He's tired. Good. Yeah, bye. Oh yeah, it's uh, might need to slight angling. I can do it. Go on, you carry on, Sam. Um, it's just got a lot of me in it, and it doesn't need as much me. Me, me. me. Yeah, exactly. Whoa. Oh, look at this live oh. altering of cameras. <laughs> Is that a bit better? No. Yeah, that's much better because it's got less of me. More of me. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. My chair is um, super hot. After that, yeah, brief adjustment. Really high Welcome high back to High Rollers. Although it stops Mark from putting his hand in your face, so mm. it's actually probably better for you to sit higher up. Yeah. Uh, welcome back to High Rollers, uh, fifth edition campaign here on the Yorkscast well Twitch. It's been a little, been 20 days since we last did one of these. Oh. 20 days. But we're back now, um, and not only are we back, we are back with a brand new, a whole new team. Because we now have Tom Hazel, who's joining us as a permanent yeah. member, which we mentioned last week. Yeah. So he's wearing the merch. He's yeah. even wearing the merch. Well, good boy. Yeah. Good boy. Start your cool. car, start. Uh, but we also have a new in control oh. person. We have Becky now in yeah. control of the stream. So a big warm welcome to Becky from chat, please. Um, Steve is enjoying a well-deserved weekends off from now on after yeah. being with us for a while. Um, he's still going to be doing other streams, but yeah, he's uh, Becky. I think is going to be looking after us on Sundays. If you're wondering why our room is extremely bare, it's been stripped out because of EGX, or our equipment is at EGX right now. And there was also some set. filming they were doing last week where they there were set huge stuff. sets in here. why we weren't streaming last week. Yeah. yeah, we weren't just lying when we said the set was gone. Yeah, plus me and Mark were at lot. Plus we were at lot. Plus, uh, it's also there because tomorrow, Hopefully. Hopefully. Fingers yeah, crossed. Fingers crossed. They're actually putting up our brick walls behind us. So oh, fingers crossed, cool set. Pseudo next brick week walls. we'll have a, a cooler set than we do now. Yeah. So. But the biggest news, to talk about right now, before everyone goes during the break and doesn't come back, is if you enjoyed High Rollers Uncharted Territory, which we did in conjunction with Wizards of the Coast. I know I did, Mark. Did you enjoy it, Chris? I loved it. Well, do you know what's even better? Would you like to do it again? No. Yes. <laughs> we're back. Uh, we're going to be doing a brand new spin-off series. It's going to be called Ten the the working title, which is probably going to be the final title, is High Rollers Dead Reckoning, um, and it is a uh, brand new stream. It's going to be exclusive on the twitch.tv forward slash dnd stream. Um, it will mostly be pre-recorded, but we might also be live. We might be jumping in chat to chat we'll with be you all there. Um, but it's going to be a brand new stream. It's going to be going out on Wednesdays at 6 till 8 p.m. Uh, UK time, which I think is something like 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. PDT. Uh, so that's going to be brand new. It's going to be on Twitch, on the D&D Twitch. It's going to be on the D&D YouTube as well. So make sure you watch that. It won't be on Yogscast. That's the main thing to get across. It's going to be on the D&D Twitch. Um, it's a brand new campaign. It's another little spin-off series, very much like Uncharted Territory was. But this brand one new is characters. Brand new characters. Brand new characters. And this one is going to be, uh, it's more like an anti-hero story. It's kind of a Rogue One prequel to the Tomb of Annihilation. You should check it out on Wednesday because we're going to be doing live character creation and talking a little bit about what the campaign's going to be about. It features this crew that you see before you uh, with Tom Hazel joining us. I'm in. <laughs> he's in it this time, in this time. Um, so he's, he's joining us, um, and it's going to be a lot of fun, it's going to be really interesting and quite different, I think. Um, it's not um, what you expect, it's not like the campaign book setting either. Yes, it's very. It's a prequel and it's very different to that, but it still ties into elements of Tomb of Annihilation, it's kind of my personal take on you know some of the things that might have happened beforehand, so what was that Kimberly? I said it'll be interesting if you let me be what I want to be, which is a dragon knight. No, you no, you, you are not be being the, the no, you're not being the dragon knight. Level two, turn into a dragon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's so ridiculously overpowered. And? Um, anyway, so that you can check out on Wednesday. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's we will really tweet good. more details. So follow us at High Rollers D and D on Twitter, where we will post the times, etc. What we're going to be doing, as Mark said, uh, this Wednesday will be live, and it will be more of a character creation introduction. So if you're curious about what the new campaign is mm -hmm. about, then don't miss that because it will explain it in a bit more detail. And then after that, it will be the actual campaign itself going out at the same time. Yeah. I think it's kind of cool D &D. that we're doing like a character creation. I don't think anyone's seen us. No, that's characters. it. And yeah. That's kind of why we thought of doing it, wasn't it? Like, you know, people always asking, like, how do you make characters or like, what's the process and stuff? It's and gonna be a lot of me like, can I be this and Mark saying no? Yes. <laughs> and Kim, oh, yeah. Kim also did as well. I've got a whole list of classes to go through, so. Yeah. From I made up no, a, no, a class, no, I put it on no. DM's guild. Can I be edgelord, please? 
look forward Please to that on Wednesday. It. Also, <laughs> if you did also it. enjoy Uncharted Territory, our poster for Uncharted Territory yeah. is on the store, and it's still I might still say pre-order, but it's still it's being shipped yeah. now. Some people have already received their posters, mm -hmm. so it's on store.yogscast.com, and I think it's a limited run. Yes, so it if is. you do want to get one, then um, get it's it not on, go, go, it's go. only on the UK store. It's not on the US, but grab it while you can. Mm -hmm. There is a thing I think where if you order over a certain amount on the UK store, even if you're US, you do get free shipping and free stuff shipping. as well. Cool. So, okay. um, but there's not only that, you can also get the Tomb of Annihilation book itself on the Yogscast store. And That's now sale, available. Sale price. It's sale price. Uh, I should have brought my copy in with me, but it's really cool. You should buy that. Um, there also might be some even more exciting merch going up on the store this week, but we don't have a thing to show you, so I don't want to talk about it until we we'll have We'll talk about it next week. Yeah, we'll talk about it next week. But it's very exciting, so keep an eye out for that. And with that, I think that's all the announcements <laughs> done. Have I forgotten anything? I think so. Uh, Tom Hazel, no. anything you want to say? I just, I'm going to mention the I'll show say thank again. you to Mark Humes for bringing me the note. Thanks, okay. Mark. You're the best. I mean, Love you. He's been a paramount member for like three What's weeks. What's he done? I don't know. <laughs> I'm the one who had to prove it. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Right, so uh, a brief recap. Uh, for those of you who weren't here on the last episode we did, the party pursued a certain individual uh, who had basically has been a thorn in their side for some time. Uh, Elora's father, Alphadon, was struck with a curse a long time ago of uh, a, a special type of lycanthropy, which made him a winter werewolf. He escaped from uh, the Northern Lands and had disappeared into the wilds. Um, and through to some scrying spells, Elora learned that not only was he making his way into the Dawn Republic, but he was being pursued by Crown Rend, an, uh, an artifact um, intelligent item that had once uh, belonged to Juto or was working with Juto, but had uh, tried to manipulate her into doing evil things. Um, and had joined up with Sylvale Frostwalker, the daughter of a previously murdered uh, noble who was trying to corrupt the elven lines and generally cause bad stuff. They pursued them into an old dwarven temple set up into the mountains, into the Grasping Peaks, an ancient place. Um, there they faced against Sylvale and Crownrend, who had teamed up um, and who had managed to unlock several new powers that Juto was not aware of, including the ability to symbiotically join together and become one being temporarily. After a very difficult fight where there was people being dropped in lava and all sorts of badness going on, uh, the party prevailed and Sylvale was killed. Uh, Crown Red as a bracer was recovered, um, but whilst he was still trying to manipulate the party, Cam Buckland <laughs> prayed to Avandra, his goddess, and his prayers were answered. My in divine a, intervention. In divine intervention, an extreme uh, run of good luck on Cam's behalf, um, and an angel, a deva, was sent down from the heavens themselves to basically take Crown Rend away and make sure that it was never found ever again. It was a 10% chance to succeed that roll. You got a 3% yeah. in your roll, Yay. which is pretty good. Pretty um, sweet. You looted Sylvile's body, uh, of which after the Crown Rend had achieved its full form, um, it basically left her with nothing except a ring and a circlet, uh, kind of a band, uh, kind of like a face band. Uh, I'm trying to think, there's a character in Marvel that's got one, but basically like a metal band across the head and then sides coming down. Um, kind of like a face mask kind of thing. Oh. Um, you recover those items. Uh, her body is still lying on the ground, naked in this old tomb. You've recovered Korak. You've healed him. You've removed the kind of uh, the drug that was keeping him unconscious. Um, you've given him his equipment back that was taken from him. You also have Alphadon, who I'm pretty sure you hadn't you had healed but wasn't conscious. Um, because you weren't sure if Cam made the point of he might not be fully in control. Yeah. Um, so you kept him unconscious. Juto or Elora found an, oh, a hidden altar, a hidden sort of storage place underneath an altar where there are a number of potions um, and uh, the equipment for the long Korak and Alphadon as well. And that is pretty much where we are going to begin today. And it's pretty much over to you guys. You are currently in this old temple. Um, Korak is just kind of coming out of this grogginess, uh, having the lesser restoration removed, the kind of um, kind of toxin that was making him uh, sleepy, um, and he's just kind of coming around. You can see him sort of s slowly getting his gear together and things like that. Alphadon is currently unconscious, and it's up to you what you would like to do. Because I was burnt alive in lava, and immediately- You were heavily burned by the lava, yes, but you didn't receive a heal spell, right? My question is, for RP's sake, Am I naked? Uh, you have like magic armor and stuff like that. I think like a lot of your clothes oh, would really? have been really badly burnt. I mean, um, you're probably you tatters. Quick. 
Yeah, yeah, you, you had a frozen. Like, I was plopped in. I think like and then frozen. Well, the thing with lava yeah. is you don't necessarily you don't like sink into it. You would have landed on top, and yeah, your clothes <laughs> and armor would have basically ignited. But the ice would have quickly put it out as well. I'd say it's probably ta like you're quite badly tattered. tattered. Like the clothing is really badly sort of like burnt and crisp and tattered. The arm, the magic armor would be fine. Um, it would be heavily blackened, but okay. it wouldn't necessarily be melted. Or anything like I that. don't have magic armor. I was also was in the lava. Am I naked? You are not, you are not <laughs> naked, uh, but you, again, clothing heavily tattered, heavily burned. Damn. Ashen. Um, oh, yeah, man. like as in like shreds, it's like shredded and you know. You're not so much singed. a bumblebee anymore. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> How's my cape? Uh, pretty, like most of it's been burnt away. Oh. You yeah, look both of you, both that's... of you wear capes, and both of your capes have pretty much been burnt away. Oh, hang on, that's that's wrong. Eight charisma. That's meant to be eighteen. I'm just going to say that now. <laughs> yeah, I fucked up. Okay, that's my fault. <laughs> right, let's move on. Uh, well, you also that's ex uh, another ring wrong because you've decided to start wearing the circlet of intelligence. Yeah, true. Dot. So I now have nineteen intelligence. Nineteen intelligence, 19 intelligence giving you an incredible stat line. Yeah, I'm great. I'm a best. eighteen charisma. <laughs> my lowest. Eighteen, is yes, 18 charisma. That's nineteen intelligence. It's just not fair. It's just not fair. He's a superhuman. No free art, please. <laughs> no, please. So, uh, after answering your questions. Saying that, I'm not too bad. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> not too bad at all. So how's Korak? Uh, is, so Korak's He's awake. kind of coming to, he's kind of like, you can see him like trying to rub his eyes and he's kind of looking around. I'm assisting he's him. He's slowly putting his armor and clothing back on. Um, Juto is helping him, which he's kind of taking, but he's not really saying a lot. It looks like he's still kind of getting his bearings. Can I take uh, my father's uh, Weapons and that mm -hmm. were in the thing, mm -hmm. and just keep them on yeah, my person. Yeah, it's only his than... only his um, long sword yeah, uh, and I his clothing. It. Basically, uh, he didn't have any of his armor. He's he, he fights with magic as well as swords, so he didn't have any of his armor when he left. Um, he literally only had his bejeweled long sword. And that's the only thing okay. that's there. The dagger you still have the broken yeah, dagger the broken. that he used to fight with as well. Um, I'm probably on my knees in a corner somewhere, praying to myself. I'm like, Fuck yeah, that was so cool. Thank <laughs> you for making me so badass in that moment. God, that was cool, thanks. Yeah, that's and cool. I might be muttering it, but thinking it's in my head. Okay, you can just hear Cam <laughs> muttering to himself over in the corner. I love you, Andrew, God! The temple without the lava is quite dark. You literally only have a few specks of light from various magic items and any torches that you have on. Um, the temple is dark. There is definitely uh, that kind of heavy smell of um, Brimstone, like again, the kind of lava was poured, mm. drained away, but you know, and it's still kind of coated the these kind of channels with like a thick layer of like crusty, you know, molten rock. Can I um light up my moon bow for some light mm. in the chamber? Yeah, it kind of sheds yeah. it out in the chamber. Is the um so the lava in the channels have been it's been drained away, oh, okay, yeah. but it's still left like a really heavy, thick crust all along the bottom. Yeah, like yeah. most of the heat and liquid has been drained. Can I um are there any torches or anything? Not in here, no. Um, what you do know, I mean, most of you would be aware that dwarves have dark vision, mm. so generally they uh, don't bother with lights. <laughs> They're well, kind of fine working in the dark. I'm just going to turn my flashlight You've got your little, you've got your little first light flashlight, yeah, your little metal tube of light. Ah, oh, back in the room. Wow, you look awful. You look awful? No, you look worse. Mm, you look worse. You were in the lava for way longer than me. Can I just make sure that my father's okay? Yeah, he's I'm gonna breathing. be with him. Uh, he's breathing, you've healed his wounds, yeah. um, he's sleeping, which is rare for an elf. Um, you suspect that you, I mean, you being an elf, you know you can't magically be put to sleep, but things like toxins probably still could. Um, and it's weird to see him, because normally when elves trance, they're still somewhat aware of what's going on. They kind of have a look as if they could awake at any moment. He looks like in a deep sleep. Um, okay. His eyes are just closed, breathing is quite shallow. You move him around, it doesn't seem to wake him. Okay. Uh, Laura, mm -hmm. as amazing as this is that we've got Alfred on back, should we take some security measures in case he awakens? I'm thinking yes. muzzle and maybe some ropes to tie his hands and. I bind think we him. just need to get back to Talisfell as fast as possible. Maybe we can ask Where Lady Korak. Amy is. Korak? Mm. Yes. <laughs> And he kind of looks around, um, he's got like half of his breastplate on and you know, he's got one arm gauntleted but the other one's still quite loose. Um, he's got Dawnblade sheathed on his back. His shield isn't anywhere to be found but he's kind of looking around. He's like, uh, yes, young Buckland, what is it? I'm afraid, sorry, I'm still uh, quite not sure what's been happening. Um, You're safe. Good. You're in a safe space. Thank you. You're with us now. 
he looks down, he looks and he sees the body of Silval and he kind of looks at it for a moment. The woman who attacked me, you defeated her. Yes. And the bracer she was wearing? Yes, the demonic entity. I heard it speak to me briefly. I seemed to delight in the fact that uh, I wasn't much of a match for the two of them combined. Is Althadon all right? And he looks around. He's asleep. Ah, good. Uh, he, uh, there was only a few moments bef between when she would drug us that uh, he was awake, but it was very aggressive. Uh, the curse is still quite strong, I think, within him. This was he was idea. more in control than, I believe, what you told me of when you were in the spire, but uh, he's still not quite himself. Well, we know of a cure. Good. Lady, Lady yes, has Lady Amrith has the the the, the uh, heart of Bahamut. Bahamut. We just need to get him there. We yes. need to get back to Talisval as fast as possible. I have something that would help us, but I would need to rest. Well, the, that's, you know, if that is the best option, it, it will take us uh, five days, perhaps, um, traveling by horseback. But I'm not sure if my horse is still here. Could I left I... it in Veldaban. Mm -hmm. Could I roll like a medicine or something on Aladon to see how long he might be out for? Sure, you can make a medicine. So this uses your new inter intelligence, by the way. Oh, it does. Uh, oh, so much wiser. bonuses. Oh no, medicine's wisdom. Uh, 19 anyway. 19? Um, yeah, looking at him, you're pretty sure this is, uh, you've kind of heard, like, you know a little bit about the natural world, about toxins, there's various funguses that can be kind of mixed into potions that can basically knock people out for long periods of time. Yeah. Um, you think about it for a moment. It depends on when he was last given it, but generally these kind of concoctions last about 24 hours. So uh, okay. however long ago, you know, it depends on how long ago he was dosed. Yeah. Okay. So are you all worried that when he awakes, he may not be quite in control? I just, I don't want to tie him yes. up, obviously, but if I, do. I think I think it's necessary, uh, okay. at least as a precaution. We don't want him to hurt himself and us, so... Okay. Let's muzzle him. Let's uh, get your belt off. All right, I'm uh, like pulling his back legs over. I'm like hog tying no. him. No. <laughs> we can put I him on a large stick. I'm just going away completely. <laughs> I have yeah. these It's not hard two. for you to just be like, no. <laughs> and I hold out uh, two vials of knockout drops. Okay, that could work. As a backup, if he wakes up and he can't control himself, but only then, I won't give it to him before that. I give them okay. to you. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to take off my belt, whoosh, and then... Trousers fall down. Yeah, well, probably. <laughs> probably. Let's be honest. I, I shuffle towards Alta Dawn. Your burnt, crispy trousers that are, like, falling apart into ashes. They probably just, like, crumpled in and smoke. <laughs> <laughs> just left in on the way. Uh, I walk towards Alta Dawn. Do you mind? Tying his arms. His mouth. His mouth. I mean, he's got a human face he's at the moment. He's not in face. hybrid form. Oh, I, was, I thought this. No, no, he's in no. he's in elven form. He right. looks like he did when you first met him. He looks older. Like there's more grey in his hair now. His face looks very tired. Black bags underneath his eyes. His muscles look quite tight. He looks quite like maybe he's not eaten very well for the last few days, um, or maybe a few weeks. I'll do his arms behind his back then. Anything right. that will help. Buckle it up. Okay. At least if Pretty he wakes tight. and he sees us, then. Hopefully, he can control it a bit better. He seemed to be able to control it when it was me. Can we, just in case he's not looking at us, maybe get some form of stick, write a note on the front, and then put it on his head so that he can read, don't kill us? Do you I know can how to just write? be there, Cam. Hmm? Do you know how to write? <laughs> yeah, obviously. Do you actually know how to write? Yeah. Then go ahead. I'm going to pass in my inkwell and feather. Oh my love. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine something like a feather has probably been oh. burnt to a crisp and the ink has probably boiled. Yeah, I'm out Anything for any mundane it's equipment is probably gone okay, that, that gone. you two were carrying. Things like know. rations, things like ropes. I think I had gone. Uh, an explosive yeah. charge in my pocket somewhere. Did you actually? Yeah. It's a good job I didn't remember. I didn't know that then, isn't it? Bedroll, yeah. gone. Consider it gone, but it didn't explode. But it's gone. Where did it go? In, uh, it was in um, the Trouble the Lands, in Trouble the, the Cowboy oh, Town. The, oh, I it was a stick of dynamite. Yeah, it was a stick of dynamite. Really. <laughs> in the lava. <laughs> yeah. Dead that, if I had known that that would have happened, it absolutely would have detonated. Lala. Um, <laughs> well, let's not cover his head or anything like that. We don't want anyone passers by to think we've taken a prisoner. Plus, we don't want him to think he's kidnapped again. Exactly. So, I think. See, uh, Korak is actually kind of 
he's not really listening. You can see him kind of like looking down at the body and he's kind of stretching his claws a little bit. He looks a little bit, um, something's obviously on his mind and he's kind of thinking internally. Can I um, hmm. speak with him? What'd you say? Um, how did this happen? Uh, it's very difficult to remember. I, I travelled to Veldaban after dismissing Master Ferrohorn. Of um, my own choice. He like looks over at you. I share an eye roll. He doesn't actually eye roll, he looks over at you. There's actually kind of a look he kind of gives Reynard. Um, it's not a disapproving look, it's not like a mocking look or anything I'm like that. Uh, he just is... After dismissing Master Ferrohorn, I travelled to Veldaban. Um, I found tracks that I thought might be Alphadon and... Uh, there were signs of a fight, a battle. Uh, I located uh, scorch marks, blood, that sort of thing. And then, as I was following them, a woman appeared on a trail leading towards the mountains. I didn't know her, but she was elvish, and I recognized the bracer that she wore on her arm. When I called out to her and asked if she was responsible, the arm, the bracer, transformed into a metal arm, and she transformed into uh, some sort of wolf creature. At first, I thought I had the upper hand. We fought for a time, and it was a desperate match, but I felt I was going to come up on top. And then the two of them somehow became stronger. The gauntlet spread over her body, and I just couldn't keep up. I thought that I was more than capable to take them on, but it was furious, uh, unrelenting. The next thing I knew, I was in chains, uh, hanging above this temple. Did you remember us talking about Salandra's Frostwalker? Uh, vaguely, yes. I remember what you mentioned beforehand. Um, the, the one who of... tried to corrupt the whole elven race. And yes. turn them. That's his daughter. A shame. He kind of looks down. Why is it that so many allow the corruptions of their family to leak into their own lives. If she hadn't done such terrible things, I might pity this woman, perhaps, but... Well, she was the last of that corruption. Even more reason to pity her, I fear. Crown Sad Ren... that that line is to end. Crown Ren does that, though. Once you are fused with him, he manipulates you and turns you into... Well, you saw what she became. Mm. He ponders for a moment, and then it looks like he's going to say something, and he doesn't say anything. Uh, he does look over at Ray Reynard, though. He's like, Master Ferrohorn, I believe I owe you somewhat of an apology. If I had not asked you to meet with the others, perhaps the two of us combined could have taken on this woman and saved Arthodon. She was a very, very strong foe, even while fighting her. Uh, it took four of us to bring it her took down. Four, it took all of us to take her down. And uh, a god. Cam almost died. What has happened to the bracer at this point? I don't see it. None of you have taken it, I assume. You will love this, Korak, okay? Perhaps. Me and my god, Evandra, I think something's happening there. And she actually came to visit because I was like, I'm your best, come on down. And she did. No, she didn't. She did. She sent. She sent, but it's pretty much her, all right? At that point, she sent a angel, essentially, and mm -hmm. that angel locked away Crownrend in a angelic lockbox in a different plane where it cannot come back. Kind of breezes like that is actually a great comfort, Master Buckland. I'm glad that the Divine have at least secured that none others will fall prey to this bracer and its demonic act. I've heard stories of artifacts, they are very difficult to destroy, so if they have taken it away and prevented any others from having it, it is likely out of this world for quite some time. Yeah. Good. Good. Can I roll a perception to see, you know, because he was about to say something? Insight. And... It'd be insight. insight. Ooh. Yeah. 20. Uh, you're not sure what he was going to say, but yeah, there was definitely, there's other things on his mind um, that he's probably... He doesn't want to talk about out loud, perhaps, or he doesn't want to certainly talk about them right now. Okay. But um, you can see he kind of looks down at the body of Silval and he turns to the rest of you. What do you intend to do with these remains, at least? Uh, Are we to leave them here? What's the elven tradition? 
Is there an elven tradition that I know of? Um, generally, I mean, it's well? different for the different spires, that's the problem. I mean, in the moon spire, generally it's a ceremony at, at night, underneath, you know, moon, using radiant light, using things like moonbeam energy to kind of disseminate, disseminate the body. Um, you know, normally it's conducted a very small ceremony with family. You're not really sure what the winter spire traditions are. Um, likely involved, you know, it probably involves snow or ice somehow. We should Not return really sure. her body to Nalistri. Yeah, he'd know what to do. And plus it would be back where she belongs. Nalistri's not even his... It's not his sister. No, but... They had a bond, at least. Even if they are not blood, they were raised as if they were so. Does he know what she turned into? Mm -hmm. Yes. And she killed several of his men right outside that door. However, it would provide him and the whole tower closure, at least. I think they earn that much, like Korak says. It's a pity, but still. We could take her body with us, but I don't see I a way to go it. back to... We have more pressing matters to deal with. My oh. father could... He's a werewolf. Well, if we get him to Talisval with us, and then we can send somebody to transport the body from Talisval, I'm sure Korang's got contacts. I'm sure that, that something can be arranged. Um, I remember you saying that Nalistri had been advised of the situation. It may be that he's already sent men to Talisval mm. to liaise with us regarding the effects. If we can do that, then... But Five yes, days. we'll focus on Althadon, but if we can transport her with us... I can carry the body, if nothing else. Five days with a corpse suppose I should be a useful for something. Comfortable ride. I can get us there quicker. I can transport us through trees tree. to Telsval directly. We would need to leave this place and find a tree big enough. Maybe in Veldavan. There are no trees that go tall enough and then curve round to Talisval. <laughs> That's stupid. Yes, Cam, it's really stupid. Then why Never even mind. bring it up? It's fine. But I would need to rest before we do that. It seems that that might be in order regardless, and the magical healing is one thing, but I have not slept properly and my arms have been chained up for some time. There is a number of copses and forests just beyond the mountain range near Velderman. I'm, I'm kind sure of sick of the fun. smell of like brimstone and... We can leave here if you wish to camp outside. Yes. Let's get some fresh air. There is a lot of dead dwarves from what I re recall you yes. Silvar mentioning. Pretty nasty. Very well. Uh, what would you like to do? Um, can I kind of respectfully cover up Silval mm -hmm. and... Um, do you have something to cover up with? Uh, I have a cloak. Okay, yeah, cloak will do. And yep. um, I think, I guess, like, work with Korak to transport... I mean, Korak's strong enough that he can yeah. basically just carry her. I mean, she's an elf, she's pretty light, he just kind of does this and carries her. You can see he strains a little bit, but, mm. you know, it's fine for I him to carry I'll hold her foot. Okay. Let's do it, it's correct. Me and you. He like, looks over here, he's like, yes. <laughs> but he then quickly takes enough strides that you can't, you're like, oh. Yeah, you got it, you got it. I'll carry my father. <laughs> okay, you're, yeah, yeah, belt of giant strength, Laura, like, <laughs> carrying your quite burly six foot odd dad, just carrying him around. Um, yeah, you're going to make your way back across the bridge, uh, past all the dead dwarven bodies uh, that littered it as you entered here. You pass through the, the empty dwarven town that was kind of surrounding this temple or whatever it happened to be. Um, and you make your way through the caverns and into the outside world. The fresh air, as you emerge, it's near night time. Um, it's kind of, the sun is very much, pretty much settled, just a slight pink haze in the sky. Um, you can see it's still incredibly overcast. Um, the whole Dawn Republic has been covered in thick cloud for months now. Um, but outside there is at least fresh air, fresh breeze. Um, it's summertime, so it's not cold. Okay, I was gonna ask. Mm -hmm. In the mountains, would it be that cold? It is chilly, but you know, as you get further down, like you know, you're not in the tall peaks of the mountains. Okay. You're kind of at the base and on the southern side, where it's a bit warmer. Nice. Um, you know, kind of more Tibetan hills, kind of thing. I'm gonna find a nice mossy patch. Yeah. So it depends on how far you want to head down. Once you I mean you come out of these mountains, you're not still in mountainous areas, but you know, within a couple of hours, you can easily walk down into the hilllands, and there you can probably find like little streams and things like that to camp beside. Um, before we get too far away, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to ask the group to stop and then um, I would like to light some in incense at the 
um, entrance of okay. where we came out and just say some prayers for all okay. the... Do you pray to a particular god or is this to spirits or ancestors or...? Ancestors, just the kind of, you know, um, paying respects and asking mm -hmm. my ancestors to help those um, who were slaughtered to Pass find on. peace. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you take some time, you watch as Tito kneels quite quietly. I just want to pay respects. Like, kind of yeah. The smoke drifts up. Um, in the kind of entrance of the, the town and the cavern, I mean, the, the air isn't really blowing down here, so the incense just rises and dissipates. Um, Korak takes a quiet moment to kind of acknowledge what you've done and then carries on. Um, smells nice. And then, yeah, you guys make your way out into the outside world of the Dawn Republic, um, and you find a spot to camp. Um, you two lost most of your things like bedrolls, water skins, etc. So Trousers. It's not going to be a comfortable night um, unless you guys have a way of, you know, conjuring tents or a space to sleep in. Um, I'm gonna... Since um, I trance rather than sleep, mm -hmm. I'll give um, Cam my bedroll. Okay. Thank you. And, um, I have an explorer's pack. What's on that again? You get like bedrock and There's stuff. There's a bedrock, yeah, I think. Yeah, basic recruitment. It's basically, it's only because these two, normally I don't track this stuff, but it's because you yeah. two have basically everything. lost everything that yeah. wasn't, you know, even things like gold in your pockets, you probably lost as well. Not so not any gold you were carrying on you probably is lost. Potions you were probably lost. Gold? Oh God. If you were carrying oh. like in your pockets, How when you hit you lava, it, would it probably would. I mean, it might. I'd say that you'd lose. Let's say you lose half of it because the value is like just melded together. So you can probably sell it as like here's a some chunk. molten gold. Yeah. Um, it's like a chunk of molten. It was in my back pocket, so it's shaped like my butt cheeks. No, um, <laughs> one butt cheek. Yeah. How With big some do you think? Lint. How big do you think a four hundred gold worth? Is, I mean, like, <laughs> I imagine that you had some of it like as platinum coins, so it's kind oh, of like yeah. gold and platinum merged into it. It's probably like the size of a big baseball, like oh, a big man. softball. Um. Same for me. That's about as much as I've got. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, an, it's not the most comfortable long rest you've had. Mm -hmm. um, there's no real shelter if the weather turns bad, but you just kind of have to risk it. Korak doesn't seem tired. He seems to just kind of be sat quite quietly. Um, you can see that he, he's put the Dawnblade, his uh, famed full shot sword, in his scabbard. He's not touched it since. He's just kind of, you know, keeping himself to himself. Um, can I go over to him? Yes. Quietly. Yes. Korak, you seem distracted. Is there anything you wish to talk about? Uh, perhaps when we're back in the city, I feel it is... A lot has happened for many people here. And it is not necessarily a place for me to discuss the dark thoughts upon my mind. I'm glad that we did not necessarily leave the body there. It seemed inappropriate to do so. But, nah, he waves a hand. Nothing that cannot wait until we're back in the city. The city has many ears and spies, though. Considering that I am no longer a pol of political importance, uh, I am sure that whatever we discuss in close quarters will not be too much of information that can be used against me. Fair. Uh, and then with that, I kind of leave him to his thoughts. Okay. And um, I'd like to go over to Sil Val's body and then mm -hmm. light some incense for that as well. I'm yeah, just, it's just you know. kind of the cloaks placed over it. It's just kind of lying near Korak on yeah. the grass. Um, you light the incense and burn it. You can see like a very slender, she was very athletic but still quite lithe because she was an elf, like formed just underneath it. Um, you have the ring and the helm she was wearing, don't you? Okay, just so I know. Um, yeah, the night passes, the weather doesn't actually turn bad, it's cold and breezy. Um, uh, Reynard, you don't particularly wake up particularly, you know, well looked after, like you don't really have like blankets and cloaks to keep you warm. Don't have a cape anymore. Um, you basically <laughs> had to huddle up on like a bit of grass and try and get what you can. Lie over a big rock. <laughs> yeah. like, mm. I light um, some a little fire. Yeah, like you've got campfires and things like that. You, okay. It's not like you're super cold, but it's not the most pleasant evening. Um, but you wake up, uh, you may prepare spells and, and gain all the benefits of long resting as you see fit. Um, you're on a small uh, trail coming down from the mountains, small babbling stream. Um, you can see off in the distance, quite far in the distance, Velderban, a little forest uh, just to its east. Um, oh, it's good to be out of such a horrible dungeon thing. Mm. Uh, I don't suppose you have thought to bring any food with you, perhaps? 
I kind of gave a lot of my food away. All of mine's been cooked. Mm. I still have some. I still have rations. Is there enough for all? Uh, I have eight. It's more than enough for everybody to have something. Days. Also, ration. Laura's a. Also, I can you can sort of hunt food anyway. Like rabbits and things and I like can that. Cook. Great. So between all of you, you do manage to get a decent meal. Uh, Korak eats quite hungrily. Um, Korak does look over to you, Laura. He's like. I know that this may be somewhat difficult, uh, Lady Galanadel, but uh, your father has not been well looked after by this Silval. Although he is sleeping, it may be of benefit to try and force feed him something for nourishment or water at least. Um, I, I'm not sure how long he's been prisoner. I was certainly kept there for a few days uh, without much but water. So Hydration will be enough, I think. Just make I, sure he swallows it, doesn't choke on it. Yeah, can I try and... You can kind of have to lift his head up and you can kind of pour water in his mouth and, you know, even in a sleeping state he still swallows and things like that, you know, he can kind of massage the throat and get him to swallow. You can see that, yeah, definitely he doesn't look well. Um, it looks like he's barely eaten in like maybe like the last four or five days he's just been drinking. Um, so he's, you know, starting to get a bit malnourished and things like that. Um, his hair, it had some grey in it, but there's pretty like bad streaks of it now. Just everything that's kind of happened has definitely taken its toll. Mm-hmm. Even Korak, you can see a few of his scales have kind of gone. Um, Does he get grey scales? He doesn't get grey scales. His his scales are very shiny and bright, but a few of them have become quite dull. Um, and you suspect maybe that's a similar thing, that as Dragonborn get older, their scales turn duller in colour. Mm. And we go up to Korak. Yes, Mr. Buckland. Quick question. Yes? Do you shed? <sighs> When we are younger, yes, we shed, but once a dragonborn reaches a certain adult age, it is very rare for scales to shed anymore. Really? Yes. You keep the same scales? For once you reach a certain age, a dragonborn age quite differently. We age a lot slower than humans. Our bodies expand gradually over time. Interesting. I was just expecting... He also, like, he kind of flexes a muscle and, like, you can see he's, like, the scales are actually just a top layer along the muscle, very much like his skin. Um, new scales tend to grow in rather than shedding old ones. Oh, that's a shame. Just imagine a whole Korak husk that you could pose and stuff. Do you think I'm a snake? Sorry, we've seen a lot of snake people recently. Ah, I'm afraid that no, I do not shed. Shame. Do you shed? Yeah. (laughs) I've heard humans constantly shed. Also, I've got dandruff. That does not surprise me. Wouldn't you technically have, like, you know, burnt skin? From, like, you know, when you the heal spell burn. probably would have healed Aww. his skin and things like, like that. You just peel off a Very badly burnt. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like the heal, the heal spell would have basically kind of grown new skin and then the old burnt skin would have flaked off, yeah. like, during the spell. Magically disappeared. Well, yeah. Right, otherwise, he'd be peeling himself and eating it. Yeah. Oh, you seem Same with like, things like when he was first dropped in the lava, things like his beard and eyebrows probably would have ignited, <laughs> but they have grown back with the magic and healing spells. Excellent. Is he still blue? Are you still blue? Um, it was only no. a few hours, I think. Yeah, let's, it's say, hours, let's yeah. say it's faded. Okay. Um, <laughs> you of... look like such a freak. <laughs> 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 like, no hair. No, 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 so, anyway, uh, serious you have <laughs> rested, you've eaten. Can I ask I don't see Korak. a big tree, sorry. Korak, uh, if we were to... Um... Eight hours, it took you a few hours. Althadon is starting to stir. You can see that he's starting okay. to come a bit too. Korak, if we were to transport into, via tree, into Talus Vale, would people try and kill us? He kind of looks at you, I'm not familiar with your druidic magic specifically. Um, Arriving in Talus Val via magical means is certainly not expected. It's likely guards might be summoned, it depends on where you arrived. Arriving in Champion's Hold would likely cause a stir. Arriving perhaps in a small park or something where there is more common folk might cause alarm, but it would take some time for guards to receive word. Was there a, a little garden outside the back of the yeah. unicorn's patch? No. <laughs> okay. But you know that there are parks and stuff within the city. Um, you know that there's the graveyard district has trees. You, 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 that you've seen those before. Yeah, there's also there trees, trees just outside the city. Is there any trees near the Temple of Bahamut? 
Um, yes, probably in one of the nobility districts in, I can't remember the names of the districts off the top of my head, but yes, there's um, one of the regions uh, where all the jewellery jewellers are and things like that. Oh, so where we there, went, yeah. And there's parks there that you've seen. Um, that wouldn't be too far from Champion's Hold in the temple. If you find a place with some dense trees, we could kind of like come out into them without much line of sight. Can I go, can I, can I, can I, the, the jewellery centre, the park? If I was to appear, if we were to come out of a tree there. It would likely cause some alarm amongst the. the but if they folk. saw it was you, they would but likely. It's be. likely that that would calm them somewhat, yes. Well, we don't have much time. I don't want him to wake up without being with Lady Amy. Then we should move now. I, yes. I'm afraid that this. We were. You must simply make a decision, Lady Laura. Your magic is, is yours. We not will something transport I know well. to the jewellery district. Very well. I'm climbing a tree. Very well. I'm ready. Reynard down. Picks up. That works. Not tall enough, right Okay. Korak um, <laughs> picks up uh, Silval's body. He gathers the supplies, helps put out the camp and things like that. And you guys find the nearest woods and cops. You can see Althadon is stirring, but he's not fully awake. He's kind of murmuring, almost like somebody waking up from a long dream. Should we do anything about? We have a. He's still tied up a little bit. He's but, still um, tied up. We have about six and also, seconds. Also, Laura to is get holding through. him. Six seconds. We have a very small amount of time to get through this tree, so everyone needs to go. So when I no open hole. it, one after another, straight away, and move away from the tree when you get there. Okay? Does that I'm, make sense? We're gonna run at a tree. It's gonna. I'm gonna open a thing. Okay? Um, I'm baffled. I'm gonna position myself behind Cam. Everybody hold on. So everybody, everybody get in a line. Okay. Uh, Conga line through. <laughs> yeah, basically anyone can step in and exit from the destination plant. Six seconds. Five days of travel in six seconds. Yeah. Cam's brain's shutting down. <laughs> a regular occurrence. Okay, yeah, you, as long, you've seen it once before. For yep. the duration, any creature can step in. Uh, using five feet of movement. Yep. Okay. So, uh, you summon druidic magics, um, and you all watch as a, from the tree, a green energy kind of seeps outwards, um, and it begins to form into a swirling pattern. And at first there is, you can't see anything, but then it kind of flashes, and you can see what looks like a park within Talus Val, um, and you know that the magic is activated. The blood vessel Go. just goes in my head. <laughs> okay. Go. So, uh, who's... Yep, Korak just steps through. I'm going. Order's going in a line. Okay, so I'm everybody's... Um, and there is that kind of brief sensation that you've all felt before of being pulled out of your body, um, as if kind of gravity is just dropped underneath you, but horizontally, um, as you just feel your kind of sense of self being yanked forwards, and then the sounds and the smells of the city hit you like a wave. Um, this cacophony of kind of just idle chatter from amongst a busy metropolis, um, the smells of a city, the kind of, you know, uh, unwashed bodies mixing with perfume, mixing with baked goods, you know, mixing with the grass of this park that you now find yourselves in, a small, walled, private kind of botanical garden almost. Um, and out of this uh, beautiful um, tree, oak tree, you just... Um, Holy fucking shit! Ah! You find yourself standing on uh, freshly kind of covered mud and, and dirt with a little fence around it. Um, um, can I get my bearings really quickly and just head straight towards okay. the temple? Yeah, so you start like trying to get your bearings, you're, you know, traversing around, you're very well traveled in, you know, finding paths and things like that. There's a couple of, you see a couple of like noble ladies like looking over their eyes wide. One just kind of <laughs> like makes a noise as the other one's like looking around. Um, you basically work out that, yeah, you can easily make your way towards Champion Hold and the temple is not far from there. Um, you can see the centre of the Champion's Hold is right in the middle of the city and rises up. It's quite easy to find your way from there. Um, and you just take off, right? Korak follows suit um, and I'm assuming the rest of you will go as well. Yeah, in a daze. <laughs> the, the, your, your little party gathers a lot of attention, a lot of people gasping. You hear things like, is that the Champion? Those are, those are the heroes that the champion knows, blah, blah, blah. They're the troublemakers that have caused all the problems with the broken sky, like all this kind of like chatter going on. Um, a few gasps. Um, the, the body that Korak is covering, there's a few quite, you know, oh, what's that? 
is that a dead person? Oh my god, like there's a few, you know, by the gods. You can hear this kind of idle chatter going around. Right, maybe we should like cloak the, the body. There's there's a, he's got a cloak on it, but right, right, right. it's very clearly he's holding a body, body under yeah. a fucking thing. Okay. Um, there's a few guards that kind of go to stop you, but then as soon as they see Korak, they kind of take a step back and just nod their heads. I'm looking very stern, like if they try and stop me, I will beat them up. They just... You know, it's the cha- the, uh, the fact that the champion of Talisvar, the yeah. champion of the city that everybody knows is with you, is enough to give them like pause to not get in your way. Um, I'm waving at crowds as I go past. <laughs> <laughs> you just you're like, ah oh, yes. <laughs> there's a few confused waves back. There's a couple of like, like not That's sure right. if they should be cheering. Um, <laughs> it doesn't take long to get to the temple. As you do, Althadon is like, nah, where, where am I? Mother, like it's okay. Around. It's a Laura. It's fine. You're no, safe. No, it's no. No, it is. It's, it's me. Not safe. It's safe. dangerous. It's like slowly starting to come to. Um, Can the, I run into and just shout for Lady Amy? You just burst you into the fucking temple. There's a few priests like looking around, like oh, shocked and horror, and you just start hollering out. Um, the uh, father. Uh, I know where her room is, don't I? You can head In up that the, way if you want. I want to head towards you that see, direction. You um, see, I can't remember his name. The, the high priest that you've spoken to before yeah. that helped with uh, Korak in his coma, um, he kind of comes out and he's about to say something and then he just take off. I'm just like... Um, <laughs> Korak approaches him, he's just like, Father, if, is there somewhere that we can place this young woman who is in need of... Well, and he kind of... And the priest looks, he's like, yes, come with me, champion. Um, is she... Or, uh, should we... Uh, very well. And he kind of takes some steps over. Uh, Lady Amy, you can see as you're kind of getting up into the corridor that leads to like a far corner of the room with like a little parapet that looks over the city, which is might kind of become her room and her little shrine. There is actually a few attendants who are at the door speaking with somebody and then they're like, no, no, they're coming this way now, my lady. They're coming this way now. Um, lady Amy comes around. You can see this kind of um, tall, beautiful woman with this kind of tan skin and these kind of white tattoos all over her body, long white hair. Um, covered up in sort of like these priestess robes of Bahamut. Um, she kind of looks out and she's just like, and she sees Alphadon like squirming and he's now starting to fight you. Like you're having to like use all this new strength of the frost Frostrine belt to like mm. pin his arms to his chest. He's like, no, no, it's not safe, I'm dangerous. Get off of me, get off of me. He's becoming very aggressive. Okay. Lady Amy just rushes back in, comes out with this golden orb, like this dra- draconic heart. Um, Inside, inside now. Come, Lady Laura, please. Okay, um, well, the, I'm going to keep talking to him, saying, no, it's me, it's okay, and, mm-hmm. and try and calm him down and say, we're healing you, we're going to stop this. And... You can't, you can't, it's the curse, the curse. We've lifted it before. And then the, Lady yeah. Amy, like, literally, you watch as this heart glows with a golden light. She, her hand comes up, and there's a thin, tiny point of light in between her fingers. She touches Alphadon's chest, and you have to kind of... Yeah. Mm, flex to keep him still long enough because he's shaking his head all around. The the light touches his forehead, his body goes relax, and then he's unconscious. Um, you watch as Amy gasps, this energy, this kind of white mist kind of pours out of where she touched his forehead and then just dissipates into the air. Um, she kind of takes a breath. <sighs> That was more difficult than your mother. Um, I think the curse was much stronger in him uh, for some reason, perhaps because he's been under its effects for so long. It may take him a little bit of time to recover. To but he's okay, though. He's. I And she kind of says, give me a moment. Oh, God. She just, she just you hear her utter a prayer to uh, uh, Bahamut. Um, and the prayer is, you kind of get a little bit of it, some of it's in Draconic, some of it's in Common, um, and it seems to basically be a prayer of make, like some detecting if the curse is still there. Um, you know, you kind of hear like, by the power of a great Platinum Dragon, blah, 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 something in Draconic, you know, is there anything in the line, blah, 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 something in Draconic. Um, she like, looks up at you and she's like, I, I do not believe that the curse is still in place. I believe it has been removed. He's just, his body is exhausted. Um, it will require nourishment, healing, rest is the most important thing. Um, but he should be fine. You, it's, I'm very impressed you got him back. I'm very glad. Um, but perhaps it is time, and she kind of offers to take him. He needs rest, and I think so do you. There are other things that we need to do first. Very well. Uh, I will have a room prepared for him here in the temple. Um, she goes over, speaks to the few attendants, they usher off, um, and they prepare kind of like a priest's quarters. Looks like just a small single bed, 
little tiny table window out looking over the city. They prepare that for him. They lead you to it. You can put him down. And he does seem to just be unconscious, um, as if all the energy just was wiped out of him, basically. Um, but alive. I will walk in. I see all this mm. happening. Just place a, a gentle hand on Laura's shoulders, like a pat of a job well done. Mm -hmm. Did good. Okay. It's finally, finally did it. Okay. Lady Amy smiles at you. It's just like, nods her head. And then she heads out the door. <laughs> Bullshit. Um, <laughs> the clerics in attendance keep checking on him. Uh, they bring food and water in as well and put it to the side. Uh, one of them comes up to you and is just like, when he awakes, make sure that he eats. Uh, it's clearly that he's not eaten properly in some time. Um, we need to make sure that he gets as much rest as possible. Uh, there's water here. Please don't let him drink anything else. He should not be consuming any alcohol or anything like that. Um, in terms of food, we've provided things that are plain, which should be easy on the stomach, but he will need to pace himself. Um, bread, uh, some small fruits, but not too much at once. Um, nothing rich. Um, and they just kind of nod their head to you. If you need us, uh, there are some uh, clerics of, uh, of, of, that will be able to assist. Um, or we can have healers who are more trained in mundane matters, if need be. Um, if he notices any injuries, come and let us know. Thank you for your help. And they just nod their head, head out. Um, they leave the two of you in there as it is. Uh, what are the two of you doing at this point? I have no idea. Um, <laughs> you're back you're in your temple, Rina. You're kind of just in the temple of, uh, of uh, Bahamut, yeah, I'm looking gonna, around. I'm going to go over to that. Oh, the high priest he'd left with, Saval. And... Um, yeah, he basically, him and Korak, um, they've taken her down into an undercroft. Um, mm -hmm. If you follow them, uh, it basically seems to lead down underneath the church. I'll go, yeah, I'll go with them. And I'm also going to sort of pull out my old uh, Bahamut. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm just going to sort of go like... It's out. burnt. And... I am... Um, I might need to trade this one in, by the way. <laughs> Who are you saying that to? Just a random priest or the high Just priest? anyone I can... Oh, okay. Anyone? anyone that There's like a, a couple of clerics like are you, but they actually don't stop. They just carry on. It was a... Okay. And I'm just going to like... Is there like a flower pot or something I just throw it into? <laughs> it's not a flower pot, but there's like pews and like a couple I'll of just, like little... I'll just tuck it under there just and tuck it under there. It's gone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. There's another one like in the back of the pews, there's like little prayer books and things like that. Oh. Another, like, because it was a yeah, sigil, wasn't it? it? It's just a little prayer book. That's the only thing, that's what Cassandra gave you, was just like a little oh, prayer book. Oh, I thought she gave me like a, um, uh, like a necklace sort of thing. It was a holy symbol as well, yeah. Yeah, that's what I guess is melted now. Oh yeah, that, no, that was melted. That's yeah, not yeah. even burnt. Like, your little book was completely, like, turned to cinders. The, the, the priest, it's like a ball of mush, like of molten, silvery metal. Yeah, I'll just sort of throw that under a pew as well. I'm going to give it off. Wherever, they're gone. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, I'll follow Korak and... Um... Yeah, they um, they go down into an undercroft. Uh, there's like a stone, not altar, but kind of like stone slab um, mm -hmm. where the body is placed. Um, you overhear them speaking. They mention something about the, um, the servants of the Raven Queen possibly coming by just to ensure that there is no necromancy afoot. Um, Korak doesn't seem to think that that's going to be the case, but mm. they uh, they mentioned somebody called Knightsbrook um, coming by to make sure. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. Um, oh, I mean, I'm just going to sort of just nudge Korak and just say, like, if you hadn't have let me go when you did, mm -hmm. I think we wouldn't have been strong enough alone to take down Silvile. He kind of nods for a moment and he, uh, he looks at you quite seriously for a, a moment. And it's like, perhaps, I think perhaps, who knows? None of us know what may have happened, but I was wrong to dismiss your skills, Mr. Firehorn. You have earned your place amongst the others. I thought you believed in me. Um, I think... Let's just say, after travelling with you, I had begun to doubt my initial impressions. Oh, we were doing fine. Mm, yes. Perhaps one thing, if I may counsel you on. Mm. Work on your manner with other people. I it mean... is tiresome, to <laughs> say the least. Ow. But, and he puts a massive clawed <laughs> hand on your shoulder, I do think that there are many good merits about you, Master Fairhorn, and I'm glad that you are in common company with the others. 
especially Miss Jean. Uh, I do worry of her sometimes. Um, she needs somebody to keep her grounded. I'll keep that in mind. Um, thank you, I think. Yes, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> he like, pats you on the back quite firmly. Ow, okay, ow. Um, very singed. Fell in lava, saving your life. Quite. Perhaps you should <laughs> fetch some new clothes and get yourself some. Oh rest. yes, yeah. I'm sort of going to look down. There's like loads of scratches and holes and things, and not quite opportunity. It's, it's a mess. Like you're, you're <laughs> a mess. Um, make sure nothing happens with her. When she came close to the end, she was being completely taken over by Gauntlet. Crown rend. <laughs> That's the one. No, I like the idea that he doesn't know, because <laughs> he was so new to it. You're like, all that thing. I've got this new, new circle. That's, that's like true, actually, you probably remember. That's the one. Um, yes, actually, it is something which I'm, I may ask Lady Amy to investigate. She was under the same curse that Althadon was. I do wonder if that perhaps played an element into her personality as well. Perhaps before her father's curse was placed upon her, before she picked up crown rent, perhaps she was not such a bad person. Possibly, but I mean, from what I've heard, she's hurt and killed a lot of people. Yes, I imagine so. We've all done, well, some of us have done terrible things in our past, Master Meryl. That does not always take away the right to absolve ourselves of them. And with that, he kind of takes a step and walks away. Okay, then, see you. Um, where's Jeter at the moment? Did That's a good question! Where is Juto right now? Um, can I do two things? Well, what's well, the first the, thing? So in the time, the first thing is I'd just like to catch Lady Amy as she's like kind of walking uh -huh. out. Um, so like before Reynard gets to Korak. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so I'd, I'd, I'd like to say, Lady Amy. Yes, Juto. I know that you have an affinity with Korak. <laughs> she kind of like looks away and there is a genuine moment of like, no, well, um, yes, uh, well, yes, yes, certainly, yes. He is changed. Dark thoughts trouble him. Oh, what happened? I think, I don't know, but I think his experience rescuing Althadon, being caught by Silvara Is he all right? He is physically fine, but I think he is troubled. Hmm. Thank you for telling me that. Yes, I wanted to go and find him. Um, I was worried. Uh, I will speak to him about this. Thank you for bringing this Thank to me, you. Juto. Um, One more thing. Yes? I trust you to care for him. I, well, I, I, I don't know If you what... hurt him... She, like, looks down. I will find you. She looks... There's a moment where she kind of, like catches eyes with you and you watch as her eyes take on that draconic look about them um, that you've only seen when she's in her true form and she looks at you with a kind of curiousness for a moment and I'm just deadpan like straight like you have nothing to fear from me Miss Jane it is in my nature not to hurt anyone and I am aware of certain concerns he is a interesting man and we have taught each other a lot about the time that I have missed, and the kingdom that he believed Rosaris to once be, I will make sure I take care of him. And then with that, she kind of gives you a look. And she kind of smirks a little. And it would be interesting, if my vows were not necessarily sworn, to see just how far you would live up to that statement. Um, and then she kind of turns and heads off. I never break an oath. <laughs> you just hear a slight chuckle. Coming, coming down mm. from the corridor. Uh, and then after that... Um, so can I nip down to where Silval and all that is and like hear the end of that conversation? Yeah, so you can hear the end of that conversation. Um, so like you basically get there as you basically... Korak slaps Reynard on the back and it's like, you mm. know, you don't hear the comment about you, but you hear the comment, I'm glad that you're, he's travelling with the others. Mm. And then the, the comments about Silval and, you know, so all of us have done... Maybe some was, some yeah. of us have done things in our past kind of thing that, you know, we want to atone for. Um, so as kind of Korak walks off, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to kind of sneak up behind Reynard. Okay. And, um, hi. Um, hi. <laughs> Lording over him. <laughs> say, um, this is why we must make sure that her rights are observed. She was evil, yes. Mm -hmm. She was manipulated by Crownrend. But she was good beforehand. 
As someone who was controlled by Crown Rend and did terrible things, I have to believe that. I believe you've done many amazing things, Juto, since you lost Crown Rend's control that easily make up for any terrors that you may have caused under its grasp. The troubling thing, though, is that he did... I did have an affinity for him. I did agree with some of the things he drove me to do. He, in some ways, enforced how I felt. And that is why I must believe that we can change. Silval's rights must be respected. I agree. I don't know the full horrors that she committed, but all I know is the battle and what you've told me. I believe she has atoned for it with her death and her suffering. I guess we make sure she doesn't come back. Mm. I'll just walk off. Okay. So, the shadows. is there anything uh, um, any of you would like to do at this point? Right now, most of you are in the temple. Um, the priests busy themselves looking after Alphadon, but also business carries on as normal. Prayers are continued um, after perhaps like an hour or so, or perhaps, you know, 45 minutes, the doors are opened and people from the streets come start coming in. There's a lot of angry talk amongst the people. Um, people are very unhappy with either the way the council has been acting, with how other people have been acting. You're hearing little snippets of conversation. That there are protests coming close to riots in certain areas of the city, that uh, trade is, again, like becoming next to nothing within the city. Many of the kind of other cities that were once, you know, so important to Talisval for receiving goods are no longer trading with them, that caravans are being attacked, that there's just generally a very bad vibe in the city and it's becoming quite conflicted between the two. Can I listen out for any groups of people talking about the council and how they don't like the council. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's, you kind of, in the temple, they're not really like dissidents. There's like, you hear kind of a couple of older ladies kind of saying that, oh, it, the, the council should be doing more, that, you know, they, should, they shouldn't be letting so many people into the city anymore. Like, the, the curfews are, you know, they're, they're kind of in favor of the actions the council are taking. Um, you hear a few, uh, perhaps, uh, a young man and a young woman, maybe traders, maybe, um, and they're kind of saying a little bit of the opposite. That like, oh, these cur this is it's ridiculous. They can't carry this on. They're impinging our rights. I'm gonna saddle up next to the traders. Mm -hmm. if they're sat down in a pew. Yeah, they're basically getting ready for prayers, and they kind of nod to you. I know, right? This curfew is just, just awful. They like look over to you, and I can't trade trousers anymore. There's a hint of recognition, and they look down at all your burnt clothes. Um, and there's a hint of recognition, and they're like, yeah, are you one of them? One of the ones, one of them, one of the ones that have been fighting against the broken sky. I could say that. It's just like, the council have gone mad. They've got curfews now. We can't go out at night. They're stopping people from coming in and out of the city. There are farmers out there that have not, they've not been able to come in. We can't get their food. They're not getting money. What are we supposed to do? You know what I heard? I heard there's corruption in the council. That's what, that's what we keep saying as well. We reckon some of them are working with these broken sky. That's why they're doing that's it. That's why they're too. Yeah. And it's true. But so many people don't, so many people think that it's not enough. They're so scared by these attacks, like shops being attacked or people out in the streets. They're so afraid, they're letting them take over everything. That they're, they're happy to let, leave us locked up in our houses all day. And guess what? With that curfew and people locked up away, anyone could just come in and storm the place. Exactly. It's, it's weakening us. What we need is strength. And you're a trader, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I can't do any business at the minute. Yeah, Half the cities aren't wearing traders with us anymore. You can do something. What can I do? If you want to save this town, you know people. Yeah. Spread the word. Spread the word that there's corruption in the council and that something needs to be done. Give me a persuasion check. With advantage. Okay. Rally them. Rally them. Uh, okay, 14 plus... 11, so 25. They might look at you and they're like, you're right, you're right, we've got to start, we, we've got to stand up for this. Yeah, I'm actually my like, trouser leg. They're like, not there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm going to go, I've got a few friends, all in different guilds. If the guild masters have got corruption in them, maybe it's time, the right, maybe it's time for us to stand up to them. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, who you're would right. stand behind you? The champion would. 
He would. You know what? This city was founded on certain beliefs. He wouldn't stand for this. I heard that they kicked him out. That they, they wouldn't let him, him stand. They turned their back on the champion. Who can and what's happened since? Well, he's the one that built all of this. He we did. wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Exactly. You're right. You're right, sir. Yeah. Oh, and he's like, find up. He's like, you know what? I'm going to go right now. I can do my prayers later. I have some respect for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, thank you. <laughs> after, after, after midday prayers, I'm, I'm going to go out. I'm going to speak to everybody. And the woman's like, yeah, yeah, we should do that. How about a sizable number before you enact any riots? No, no. Riots can only go so far. No, we need to. We just need to get everybody on board, and then and then we can take action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I punch the pew in front of me. Yeah. Uh, um, For the old ladies. An <laughs> old dwarf like looks back. He's like, bah, bah. just prayers. Sorry. Yeah. A lot yeah. of sins. <laughs> Gives you a glare. Turns back. I just wink at that guy and then slide out again. Yeah, slide out. Yeah. That's what I do. I would like to. Um, can I somehow get a, a vase and put some water? Some vase? I want yeah, to. Awesome I want to druidcraft the kind of flowers that were at the moon spire, <laughs> so that when he wakes up, he sees some. Take a few from seeds home. out of your spell component pouch, ones that you brought from home, and druidcraft them into grow into flowers and things like that. And I want to write a letter to my spire, to my mother, okay. and to Nalise Tree to tell him that he doesn't need to look for. How are you going to get those sent? I don't know. From <laughs> normal mail. You're just going to like, find a courier to try and send a message. Probably, kind of thing. Okay. because I don't want to go anywhere near the council. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, um, generally, Count Champions Hold would be able to send that with some expedience, but you can find there are messengers. They kind of travel all over the Dawn Republic delivering letters and packages can and I things like that. Can I pay them extra to get it faster? Yeah, you can do. Yeah, That's absolutely. Right. You find them um, a kind of gruff, <laughs> a gruff looking human traveler. You kind of have to spend a lot of the day kind of searching around to find somebody willing to go because the moon spire is quite far away and the winter spire is in the troubled lands, which are generally seen as very dangerous, especially the mountain passes. It's infested with orcs. Um, but you find this kind of gruff traveler. He's got a, a shaggy looking kind of, you're pretty sure it's mostly wolf, wolf dog. It's like 80% wolf and 20% dog. I like it. Um, I really like the wolf dog. Yeah, it's kind of eyes you up suspiciously, but kinship being a druid, it quickly like is your friend and just happily like, yeah, you know, paddle. gives you a little, little, little tail starts wagging. He kind of, the old, the kind of gruff looking man, he's got an eye patch, grizzled beard, kind of hood, looks a bit sort of striderish. He's like, mm. tight. <laughs> it's not often, it's not often that Dagon likes somebody. I can take your message for you, miss, if you want. I can only do, well, they're in different directions. Which one would you rather I deliver first? Moonspire, please. Moonspire, and he like, and he like takes some notes. He's like, you know, it's a good few days, maybe even at my best speeds. Me and Dagan camp out. It's gonna take me at least four, maybe six days to get there. Sorry, I can't go any faster. That's fine. As soon as possible. I'll deliver the message. I'll return with any anything that they wish to send back, and then I'll take your message to the Winter Spire. They're in different directions, so it makes sense for me to just pick it up. On all I'll just here. hold on to the one for the Winter Spire at the moment, and then I'll of course, talk uh, to these guys about what we want to actually do about so well. It's going to be, I'm afraid, with all the... There's been a lot of trouble out in some of the other cities. It's not necessarily safe for me to stop at some of my usual spots. I'm going to have to ask you for 100 gold, I'm afraid. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I don't care. <laughs> Just takes the money. I am not in the, the in the mood to. Tucks it away. Takes your letter. Anything. He seems to kind of have a certain respect, and he tucks it away in like an inside pocket of this thick, great coat of leather that he's wearing. Um, you can see that, like, kind of tucked behind him, he's got a very nasty-looking crossbow um, with a, qu a quiver of bolts at his side, and then some nasty-looking hand axes. He definitely looks like the kind of traveller that will make it there regardless of any kind of bandits or wildlife. The, uh, the wolf dog looks like it's pretty handy as well. Um, he just nods and takes a message and then says, I'll set out this evening as soon as I can. Thank you. Um, it takes you the better part of the day. Uh, Reynard, mm. Juto, after a few hours, comes and finds you okay. with a rep. I'm guessing that you would go to your friend for certain things. How much do you want to, do you want to spend any extra to get anything extra on there? Yeah, I've got loads of money. How much will you, how much do you want to spend? 
How much is the base? <laughs> Base is like 10, like it's not even like that. It's like oh, normal clothing wait. is like really not a lot. It's like 10 GP or something. Can I spend like 200 gold? That's, I, yeah, I'll do a random minor enchantment for that as well. Let me just check that I've got the right pricings. Oh, uh, looking up and things. I'm catching up with my friend as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, um, he's been kind of not good lately. Business has dried up for him quite significantly. I leave him some extra gold. Oh, that's very kind. He's very appreciative of that. Um, What's happening? What the fuck is it? <laughs> Stuff is happening. Stuff you is happening. You want to Enoran? Enoran. <laughs> We're going to find out very shortly. Whoa, I've got to Gurley. <laughs> hey, Gurley. Like yeah. Sure. Uh, so it's about 210 right. total. Sure. Uh, I give um, him 300. Okay. Yeah, he is very grateful. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> You, you, yeah, he's extremely grateful. The shop is looking okay, but it just looks like he's not had business for a long time. Um, yeah. He basically tells you that with all the troubles in the city, very few people are having parties and gowns and need expensive clothes. Um, the, 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 mo the wealthy merchants in particular, you, they, he's getting a sense that they may be thinking of leaving the city soon as well, yeah. like the tensions are bubbling up. But he puts a, a minor enchantment on the clothes. Um, I'm guessing you tell him a bit about Reynard's character, so do wanker. <laughs> <laughs> Annoying. Stitch that on the back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just glittery. don't show it to him when he yeah, shows it. Oh, like... Do you know about his fear of darkness as yeah, well? Yeah, because I've been okay, there. Okay, yeah, like, then yeah. yeah, then he'll probably put something on there for that kind of thing. Uh, a package. Due to his holding a package of what yeah. looks to be wrapped up clothing. Um, okay. Uh, I just hold it out, I'm just like... I'm as though you are anything. actually delivering it to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to really like... She's been gone for a good few hours. Hmm. Um... Thank... for me? Thank you. Um... And then I just turn around and walk away. Okay. I'm just going to sort of turn around to like, just like a little corner or something and just unwrap it and it is. So inside, <laughs> it's, it's not an exact replica of your previous outfit, but it's in your colours, in the black and gold um, and yellow kind of colours. Uh -huh. um, it is a, you know, a noble, you know, fancy clothing. Oh. Um, not exactly like, like yours. Kind of like that, but not. Kind of, but a little bit different. Um, probably not the same type of doublet. It looks like it maybe was pre-made and then things have been added to it. Okay. But one thing you notice is the buttons and the um, kind of, um, some of the buttons on the outfit, there's a note which just says, um, a command word, which can be whatever you want. Oh, Excel. um... Uh... On. On? <laughs> well, it's got like an umlau above the N. Un. Un. Uh, and it just says, speak this command word and you'll never need to fear the darkness. What? Un. Uh, the buttons glow. It spreads <laughs> ten, 10 foot of dim light. I'm like looking into the buttons as that happens. Just, oh! <laughs> It's dim light. It's not like blinding, <laughs> okay. but it's dim light. Uh, un again, I it suppose we'll turn it off. It turns on. Not oof. <laughs> um, un, oof. <laughs> I'm gonna sort it's of like a little cape. It's like it's little bridges. Yeah. Oh my god. It's a whole package. I'm whole gonna package. sort of really hastily sort of like throw the cape around Lots as best of I can. Lots of belts. Loads of belts. Oh, even more belts. Okay, and it's like, like I can't. Hearts up in here. I can't put everything on, but I'm like chasing after to try and find Juto. <laughs> like again. putting like yeah, I'm like well, like, running like, like a chase after Juto. Come gone. back, stop. I'm gone, and I go to the other one. Okay, you can do the same thing for the other one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I have that back, please? Yeah. It's got my. Um, are you spending the same amount kind of thing, mm -hmm. or are you just going to buy normal ones? No, I'll do the same. Okay. Um, Can I be? Revolutionising everyone I come across. Is that what you basically want to spend time doing? Just going just around like, like imagine reciting. a montage of cameras like so I heard. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm so, I mean to be honest, you're so persuasive. Yeah. Speaking to common people is kind of what you do. And it's honestly, you kind of come across a couple of people where you pick the wrong, like you overhear the conversation, but maybe pick the wrong people, and they're like, no, I think the council's doing right, and you kind of have a bit of an argument with them, and then you know, maybe you think you've had an influ influence, but you're not sure. Um, but eventually Juto comes and finds you holding another package of clothing. What is this, Juto? Is it a bomb? I've seen bombs. If you've worked out how to make a bomb, I'd be very disappointed in you. It's squishy. Squishy Go bomb. Away. I hate when she does this. Go find Alora. Well, it's been a good run. It's clothing. 
The difference with you is Enoran has made your outfit before, and knowing that you are adventurers that will likely have problems, he keeps the patterns on ready so he can remake <laughs> it, so it is the exact same outfit. Um, <sighs> this enchantment will... Uh, you can have a plus one to performance by speaking a command word. Uh, it kind of creates little ghostly musical instruments that play like little chip tunes. It's on his oh, bandana. Interesting. Yeah, it's on the bandana. On the bandana? Yeah. Excellent. It's like almost very, very faint, done in the same, in a slightly sh different shade of green, like little musical notes. Um, hmm. And when you speak a command word, you get like a little, kind of like little backing, little very faint ghostly backing soundtrack. This is Anna Rand's writing. Yeah, it's Anna Rand's writing. I know this handiwork. Yeah. I'll just look off at Juto in the distance and like smiling. And, and I'm putting on my trousers. <laughs> in, in, the, in public. In public. Like, There's some clean drawers in there as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'd strip off and then complete replacement. A few shocked onlookers, people averting kids' eyes. Don't tell me I haven't seen it before. Just like move away from you. Meanwhile, I'm running down the end of the road, still like putting on my clothes as well. <laughs> Wait, uh, you were mentioning, yeah, you probably run into Cam. You probably just catch it as Juto delivers something to Cam and then starts heading off again. And you two are looking at each other as you're both sort of half dressed in these new outfits. <laughs> well, there was like a montage. He used to have a montage of him like trying to convert people. I've got a montage of me just going up to people and saying, "She likes me." <laughs> After all this time, she likes me. <laughs> Yay! Come, come around the corner. Yeah, you're still pulling your trousers on, like, I'm still, like, pulling my other leg on, like... Can't. He's got a bandana with music going around his head. Where'd you get those clothes? Where'd you get yours? It was delivered to me. Me too. By a friend. Mm. A friend! <laughs> Don't go that far. What? Well, yeah, Juto. You... Juto gave you clothes too? Yes. Mm. What's wrong with that? It was great! I mean, mine's got more belts. Have you seen these? It's a lot of belts. Hey. Oon. <laughs> His buttons glow. That's really cool. Watch this. Oon, 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 oon. Oh my god, and then if you do the music, you go, oh, right! Uh, my, my command word is cam. <laughs> um cam, um cam. <laughs> sure. <laughs> What's this cam? All right. So yeah, I mean, yeah nice. these kind of activities probably take up the majority of your days, uh, or your day. Um, you would have had the evening, get uh, Alfred on there, probably would have had a sleep, done most of this the following day, and then it's now evening time. Um, you have Finney's Tavern, which is still available to you, which I'm guessing is where you are still basically maintaining your sleeping and eating and things like that. Um, Soon has been happily busy working away in his alchemy lab, which just kind of greets you silently. Um, is there anything anybody else would like to do? Un. Only work. when he says it. Oh, okay. Damn it. Cam. Only when he says it. That's for the best, I think. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> well. So what have you been up to? I've been uh, talking to my people uh -huh. of Talis Val. It's been going well. I'm just going to grab like a passerby and just be like, has, have, has, this, has this man spoken to you? Recently. Well, you're in a tavern right now, which is closed to the public. So do you go out of the building and then go and find a random oh, person? No, like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting okay. behind the bar. So as you guys are sitting down, eating, basically having a rest, uh, there is a... Now, I need to check how the spell works, because I'm pretty sure I can have it appear anywhere. Oh, what? Boy. We are dead. <laughs> Boop -ba -doop -ba -doop. I'm hanging out with Alora, making sure Alora's okay. Well, I'm assuming, do, are you staying at the temple the whole time, or are you popping back? I want to check in with these guys to see okay. what we need to do, so... Okay. I'll so, probably check in with them, but then well, go back to... You are checking in with them as they have some food. Mm. Some good I'm just going to follow you around and make sure like you're eating, drinking, sleeping well, range. don't need anything, brush your hair. Oh, <laughs> this is a great break point. Yeah, yeah it is a great break point. Okay, yeah. Especially kids. Oh, yeah. So... so you're there a is a man. swirl of colour, and within the tavern, Finney's tavern, that you have been staying in for some time, that was kind of left vacant while Finney was joining the council, a figure appears. Blue-skinned, wearing loose robes that are very revealing, with platinum and gold jewellery, uh -oh. white hair, but appearing normal.
normal size, perhaps quite tall, maybe like six to seven foot, uh, is a woman. Uh -oh. A woman that Cam, Elora, and Juto recognize as Princess Valania, oh, the cloud shit. giant. Bounce off! Break. break! Take a break. Shit. We're gonna take a break there because it is half six. <laughs> we can't do that. <laughs> we're gonna take a break there. Uh, Becky, if you can load up a break, we're gonna take a break. Be right back to find out what happened. Why would you leave?
<laughs> Thank you, Chris Trot. Welcome back to High Rollers. I really, Becky's very like very energetic with her count in, like it gets me pumped two, up. Three, two, one. Yeah. It's, just, yeah. Yeah. it's nice. It's nice. Uh, welcome back. Uh, we took a short break there just for uh, a quick little break. We can show you a cool thing. Two of Annihilation books. You can order these on store.yogscast.com. Discounted price. Discounted price. It's really shiny. Whilst there, why not pick up a High Rollers Uncharted Territory poster as well? Why not? Why not? Or all the other stuff we have. To also, yeah. No, just the poster. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or a Kim mug, or a Tabletop Weekly shirt. Yay! Or a Korak shirt as well. Um, Mainly the Korak, you know, for yeah. the stream. I need to eat. It's fair. Uh, we last left off the party are currently doing a lot of uh, role play, catching up with NPCs in Talisval. But before the break, they had taken a little brief moment to get some food and to have a rest at the tavern of which they've been staying at. Finney's tavern that he's loaned to them as a sort of mini base of operations. When a figure appeared in a swirl of colour, a blue skinned figure uh, with revealing clothing, white hair, um, with platinum and gold jewellery. Um, and a haughty uh, demeanour uh, appears in the middle of the tavern. Um, this image, Falania, yeah, like I said, Cam, Juto and Alora, you recognise it uh, from the mirror that you once spied in and also an, a similar projected image that you saw when members of the Broken Sky were speaking to each other. Um, this is indeed Falania, who you believe is the leader of the Broken Sky. Bad news. Um, she, the image kind of swirls into appearance and then seems to kind of look around, um, not quite disgusted, but kind of with a slight smirk on the face, like runs a finger along the bar, um, and she, you just hear her basically go like, you know I've spied on this place using scry before. It doesn't really convey how quite dingy it is. I thought this would be a little bit brighter. It's pointless, but I've got out Nimbus and okay. I'm in a fighting stance. Okay. Same. Okay. Well, I don't know how She like know. looks, you don't, you just, fists stance um she looks over and she's like oh please there's no need for any of that if i wish to fight you i wouldn't be here by myself would i i don't think that's on your terms <laughs> you're intruding of course of course not on my terms you're quite an amusing one cam buckland perhaps when all this is done i'd be delightful to have somebody of you as some sort of entertainer you'd suit a royal court i think when what is done well, when I take control of the Dawn Republic, I mean. Of course. Of course. Yeah, that. Now you're probably wondering, why has this being graced us with her presence? Um, I'm here to speak with you quite plainly. I want you to help me convince the Council to surrender. Next question. Allow me to explain a bit further. I will level this city if I have to do it my way, which is to attack it with all the force and creatures that I can muster. I will kill indiscriminately until I have won, because that is what victors do. I am offering a chance for you to save many lives and convince the council that they cannot bleed and that I would be far greater in this position, or however you wish to phrase it. Um, oh no, we can't possibly win. Let's give in for now and we'll try and fight back later. Whatever makes your conscience better. Why do you wish to rule the Dawn Republic? Because it's so weak, my dear little tiefling. They can barely look after themselves after I've inserted a few little problems and a few agents to cause trouble. They're already declaring curfews and having peasants riot against them. It's not in any fit shape. The elves understand a little bit, but even they've had their recent troubles. You need a strong leader in control, especially with the threats that you have on your borders. If I'm in control, I will be able to bring forth a much a more effective way of rulership. You know, my people and my father once ruled over these lands for hundreds of years. He was a guardian to these people. Sadly, the light fall, as it took many things from you, took them from me as well. But he instilled with me his rulership and wisdom. I can take this place and lead it properly. Mm. Um, mm, no, I don't think you can. Now, I expect this from you, Cam Buckland. You are quite the little rebel at heart. But you are, I must say, you have a way with the people. And it would be quite good to have you on my terms. Now, I know I've sent people to try and kill your friends and capture you before, but I'm willing to put that behind us. I'm willing to offer you all 
complete. You will keep your lives. I will assist you in many ways. I know that there are many problems that each of you have. Don't think I haven't done my research. Miss Jing, I believe it is. I know that you have a particular hatred for the dragons in Brasaris. Perhaps our future plans might align. We can help each other with that. The elf girl, your people are troublesome, but I'd be willing to help you rebuild certain things. We could form peace treaties, ensure that perhaps finding a way to bring your spies together closer, perhaps, and prevent any of that um, awfulness with the winter spy that you went through. And you, little Cam Buckland, little lightborn, aren't you? You keep using little. <laughs> well, you are quite small to me, I'm afraid. But, you know... I'm doing this, like with Laura and Juto. Mm, compared to me, you're all small folk, I'm afraid. A hang-up from my father. Now, you're quite interesting. I think you and I could talk a lot about things. There's a lot of mysteries around your heritage that we can discuss. Yeah, and I think you've been... Uh probing children to try and get those secrets uncovered. Now, very noble of you. I know that you're quite angry about that. I had no idea what Heskis was involved in. I gave him a job, and I am quite frankly shocked to learn of the ways that he was going about it. I'm sure you are. Certainly not what I was intending. I what were you intending? Ah, uh, you can, yeah. Given that you also used some not soldiers to find traps for your own gain elsewhere, I don't Enemy think soldiers, you... enemy soldiers. I did use my own men. Regardless. Mm. Natural 20. Juto, you notice she's moving around the room, she's touching things. There's a brief moment when there is a bit of light that comes through a beam, and the shadows on her seem. she seems real. As a certain bit of light catches her from a sort of very tiny cracked beam, it doesn't work right. The shadows are wrong. And it's then that you, you're you pretty sure that this isn't a real person. This is some sort of illusion or a, an image that's being projected somehow. Um, that this is not a, this is some, yeah, a, a trick of the light or something like that that okay. she's speaking through. Um, also, would a natural 20 tell me if she really didn't know what Hesk was doing? Uh, perception is more about things. Yeah. Insight is more about reading body language. Mm -hmm. Because it's an illusion, it's difficult to say. You imagine that she probably has full control of how it appears, so you wouldn't really be able to read the body language of an illusion because she can shape it exactly how yeah. she wants. Like, yeah. it will constantly be telling the truth. Mm -hmm. um, the figure does look over at Reynard. Now, this one is a, a curiosity. Oh. Uh, me. When did you join? What happened to that handsome dark elf fellow that you were with when you invaded my little cell of operations? Is He's he still around, alive? You didn't get him killed, did you? Since you're so omnipotent, why don't you know where he is? Oh, because I've been focused on you. You've been causing me troubles. If he's not dealing with my matters, then I'm not interested. Maybe you should be a bit more careful. I thought you were a good leader. You should always know where your potential threats are coming from. She eyes you up. You got the better of me once, and you caused my anger to flare. I've learned a lot since then, and you won't achieve it with that kind of petty comment. Well, you can't overthrow an entire city with seven years' bad luck breaking a mirror. <laughs> Always the jokester. This is why you'd make quite an amusing jester. Now, human, some sort of nobleman, perhaps, you know, I'm going to be very gracious with those who help me rebuild the Republic once I take over. I'm sure somebody of your stature, position, privilege, perhaps, might be able to benefit from such an arrangement. So I've sort of been watching everyone else's reactions to mm. this woman. Just yeah, very guarded. Mm. Hostile. Very hostile, hostile, hostile and guarded. Do not like. Oh, Reynard, meet the ultimate evil Princess Melania of the Broken Sky. Rolls her eyes. Ultimate evil. She, she's like, allow me to formally introduce myself. Princess Felania, daughter of Hecaton, ruler of the Sky Kingdom of Ios. Ah, prestigious name. Um, overthrow Talis Bar. Well, overthrow is certainly a one way to put it. Um, take control of, perhaps put under new management. And, and not just Talis Val, no, no. The whole of the Dawn Republic, Reynard. Yes, well, I mean, look at your other cities. They're falling apart without strong leadership. They're falling apart because of you. 
And how weak is it that I can bring them to their knees with only a few smatterings of insurgency? And how would you rule, Felania? Fairly and wisely, or with an iron fist? I would rule as my father taught me to. Mm. Which is? Which is the way of a good ruler. Sometimes you need to be fair and honourable, and sometimes you need to remind people why a ruler rules, because they are the ones that make difficult decisions, and they are the ones that sometimes must make sacrifices. Pawns must die in games of chess so that the kings and queens may succeed in battle. Given that some of your followers have been forced into following you against their will. Again, very much a case of when needs must. I don't wish to commit my full forces just yet. Now, as I'm aware, some of you have seen certain things at Velderban. You must be aware that my power is considerable, that this city doesn't have much hope of defending against my full might. Surely you wish to save some lives. You're all noble and heroic. Just surrender the city to me and there'll be no need for bloodshed. What makes you think we're in control or even have a say in the council? Oh, please, Mr. Buckland. We all know that the four of... Well, the three of you and this unknown man, along with the champion and several other key figures in the cities, are really the ones in control. The council is running around like they don't, under, they don't have a clue what's going on. They're very weak-minded individuals. I have a feeling you know more what's going on in the council than you're letting on. Oh, well, I wouldn't possibly give away any of my secrets now, would I? Then if you have insurgents, why aren't you just bringing the council down to your whim? You must have a weakness. Let me put it this way. I certainly have some tricks up my sleeve when it comes to the council, but I don't want... She kind of, like, huffs for a moment. Let me put it this way. Why go through a big bloody battle where many of you are going to die and then I have to replace them and uh, farmers and peasants will complain for so many years whilst I establish firm control when it can be so much easier, when everybody can profit? I'm more than willing to commit what I have to, but the question is, are you willing to pay for it? Now, again, I will offer this only once. If you don't wish to do this, if you want to do things the hard way, just be prepared for all the deaths that might be on our hands. And I say our hands, because you'll be just as responsible. You said you'd speak plainly, so speak plainly. What do you gain from taking over the Dawn Republic other than just leading these cities and these people? She like looks at you, is like... What's wrong with just ruling the skies? and staying there. Because honestly, the sight of this wretched little kingdom worming around, writhing around in its own filth, completely unable to look after itself, offends me. I look down from my kingdom, and I look upon and I remember the kingdom that my father spoke of, a glorious kingdom under his protection, and it sickens me to see these squabbling merchants, greedily, desperate for power. These peasants revolting and claiming unfairness when they should be doing what they're told. This place needs a ruler, and I will be that ruler. You mentioned a threat to the borders. You come from Brasaras, little tiefling. I imagine not you don't... willingly. Hmm, indeed. But I imagine that you remember much that they are not some mewling kitten that is happy to sit by. They are a rather ruthless and militarily powerful kingdom. Do you honestly think that they're going to stand by forever, just letting the Dawn Republic tear itself apart before they move in? Tell me, how much do they enjoy their tiefling slaves? Do you not think they wouldn't like some human ones to do their work for them as well? Hmm. I'll take that silence as at least you'll consider my offering, little tiefling, and I offer the same to you. But be warned, I have more than just a few tricks and a powerful military force up my sleeve. And with that, the image turns to nothing and dissipates. Mm. Cool. Oh. So she's scrying on us anyway. Oh, she probably has been the whole time. Oh, yeah, that was... that was Felania. Uh-huh. She's leading the whole 
broken sky to overthrow the Dawn Republic. So she's responsible for everything. The kidnappings. Basically everything. Beldavan. Yeah. She's the giants. Yep. The children. The children. And under her new beautiful leadership, I'm sure we'll all have wonderful lives. And she won't find us disgusting and eventually purge us and, you know, have her way. Is she an enemy of this Brasaris force that could come in as well, or...? Probably. Who knows? A transition of leadership to leadership, that's a huge gap in military forces. They could invade at any point from then, but... What are we to do? The council is crumbling, people are angry at them. This is a weaker point for the city. But I... it is because of her. Yeah. With her leadership, maybe if you remove the head. She is the one who has caused the council to lose faith in Korak. And placed her agents in the council. We don't know who her agents are, but we have some ideas. If this whole organisation doesn't have a leader to look to for orders, then it will crumble itself. I think that's where we need to go. We need to take her out. While also defending the city from a massive assault. What can we do to defend a city? But at least we can get... attack the leader. Could we instead transition all of the people's hatred away from the council, unify them together against the Broken Sky? I've been... Walking around, I mean, I'm only one guy, but <laughs> I've been whispering in some ears, and there is upset and annoyance, and I've kind of pushed that in the right directions against the broken sky. Regardless of what we say to the council, they don't listen to us. We should speak to Korak. Yeah. And tell him of this. We should. We should. But I, as us, uh, I think our mission is to stop Falania. And she resides in where? the sky. <laughs> How do you, yeah, we need to work out how to walk on clouds. She's got a sky ship somewhere. Oh yeah, the big ship that went up. Mm. We need to get on one of those somehow. I don't think we're strong enough. Hmm. I think we have her. to be strong enough. I don't think there's anyone else that would rise up and be willing to do that. We have to try and find people to help us. We could call upon all of our friends. This is the time where we pool all our resources because ultimately it is the fate of the Dawn Republic. So let's go to Korak. Let's splurge him with all this knowledge and information. I believe whatever Korak says is best to do. Yeah, he's the only one that has led Talisvar that hasn't potentially been corrupted. Which is why we need to get him back in power. One step at a time. No, Let's seek his counsel. We can lead the people into a revolt and defend its city, but... The people already know that Korak is their champion. They feel safe around him. Also, a, a rabble of people versus a militarized unit of cloud giants and the broken sky. I mean, it'll be a massacre. We need to prevent this before it happens. So let's go to Korak. Okay. Uh, I guess we waste no time. It's up to you guys. What do you mm -hmm. want to do? You all want to go? Find Korak. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> where do you want to start looking for him? We last saw him in Temple. Bahamut's temple. Would he still be there? You know that he's been spending a lot of time there. So. Mm. Lady Amy's quarters. <clears throat> we out. Uh, so you head. You make your way. Um, it's drawing close to evening. The stars are kind of poking through what you know little patches in the clouds that there can be. Um, Could I, in the journey, just have a more alert sort of watching around, seeing if there's people following. Sure. Seeing Give me a perception check. That's a good point. Um. Uh, Eleven. Eleven plus my perception, which is that's a year seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, you're keeping an eye out. Um, there are people. Well, first of all, as it's evening, there's actually a curfew in place. Uh, you guys are permitted around because. A lot of the guards and Dermot in particular know you and know that you're working for the city. Um, but there are no people out on the streets as normal. 
Um, you do notice that there's a lot of people watching you from windows because it's mm. curious that there are people allowed out. You watch guard patrols go by, a couple of them casting kind of curious glances your way. Um, but generally, you're kind of left to your own devices. Most people and most of the guards especially do sort of know who the three at least, and then most of them know Reynard now as well. Um, you don't notice anybody following you though. There no is always this, there is this kind of unnerving sense of being watched, but you don't see anybody following you. Mm. We need to create a area in Talisman that we can communicate without being spied upon. That might be something we can ask Korak as well. Anyway, let's go. Yeah, you make your way to the temple um, and uh, you head on inside. Mo the priests aren't there. Um, the doors are actually locked and you bang on them for a couple of hours. Uh, Cassandra is actually the one who kind of groggily like slides it open, she's like, hmm, oh. You hear it sort of like unlocking doors, the doors open. You can see Cassandra is in her armor, but looks like she might have been sort of like on watch and is, was resting as part of a like, you know, on a rotation. She's like, hmm, yep, I've just woken up for watch and you're here, what's wrong? Hey, uh, Yep, yeah, hello. How you doing? What's going on? What's wrong? And she's like literally becoming more and more alert. She's like, something wouldn't matter? What's need, happened? We need Korak. Okay, right? yeah, he's sleeping. We may need to come back for you a little bit later, but for now... Okay, well, I'm cool. watching, the, watching the temple at the moment. I've got a few squires with me. Mm, yep. Cassandra okay. should know as well. She should. She should know what? What's happened? Is there anyone that can take over your post for the time being? Uh, she looks over, she gestures, Jonathan! Uh, and you can see this young squire, she's like, right, just watch the door for a minute. Good work, Jonathan. Just lock it up. Don't let anybody inside unless, until I come back. And he's like, yes, ma'am. Locks all the doors. You can see he gets ready on like his little guard position, takes up a crossbow. Is this temple protected from scrying and infiltration communicative things? Is there a room here? Uh, she thinks for a moment. Uh, you understand I'm a, more of a hitting people with a sword and dispensing holy justice, not a priest necessarily. My kind of woman. Um, <laughs> Uh, she looks at you, um, and she's like, uh, I don't think they can protect from, like, magically spying on us. The temple is blessed, which means that creatures like fiends and things like that have a hard time getting in. Mm -hmm. um, and generally, teleportation doesn't work from those kind of creatures. Um, a demon couldn't teleport inside here, for example, and it would struggle to enter the building, unless it was incredibly will willful. Maybe uh, Lady Amy knows of something, or maybe. something that can prevent a spell, maybe, that could prevent... Maybe. She's more likely to know than I. Um, is there no... Something that could temporarily prevent while we discuss things? There must be a war room or there, some sort of... Well... This is a temple. Well, I know, but not here. I'm just saying elsewhere in this Probably the council, unfortunately. Um, uh, the only thing I can think... Well, the difficulty is, I mean... Most of the, a lot of the wizards and spellcasters are gone. They were killed in the Lightfall, and there's a few people like Alfred left. But generally, I don't think people consider that as a threat. There's, people don't expect to be magically spied on by wizards all the time. Um, well, let's just assume we're being listened to wherever we are. So it is a time. Okay. Of war. Code words. Code words. I don't think whatever we say is. Uh... Establishing a code language would be heard. Mm. So. Pretty much pointless until we have a spell to defeat that. Mm. Perhaps you should run. Can we, uh, being someone who scries myself, would I know of any ways that Can we could be hyper aware of? Um, I mean, you know that the the person who's being spied upon uh, generally hasn't. You can you can prevent it through force of will. Mm -hmm. um, you might not necessarily know. Um, but generally, if you're strong enough, you can prevent the spell from happening. Generally, for a scry to work, you have to know the subject. The closer you are with them, the better. If you carry a belonging or something that belongs to them or something like that, it's easier to do. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, yeah, there has to be, and there is a, an ability to contest it. Um, it depends on, yeah, if, if you are the targets being scryed upon or if it's another individual, that sort of thing. Is there any way that you can sense it? Generally, if it, an attempt was made and failed, you would know. If attempt was okay. attempted and succeeded, you yeah. wouldn't know. Mm. It's probably me. 
it probably is pushing the The only difference is if it is a, is a place, then th there is no contest of wills. It is just... Oh, but it's okay. fixed to that location. She, you can't move it. Finney's tavern. So I assume she scried Finney's tavern. But if she has people in the council, she probably scries there scries too. Scries there too. No, I just and if she know. knows that Korak is at the temple often, which he is. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to not be heard. So we're just going to have to be fast instead. The other thing you do know is um, if you cast something like the spell magic, if there was a sensor, if there was a scrying sensor in a room, it would potentially remove that if you were powerful enough. You could dispel the sensor. Mm. Okay, well, let's go find Korak. Could we also find the man who came with us to... Alfred. 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 Yeah, he's probably with the he's council, isn't asleep. he? Where, where uh, he's asleep. He's not technically on the council, but he does reside in Champion's Hold. Um, okay, so you guys go and find. I'm just checking once again to see if there are any spells in particular. I mean, something like Magic Circle maybe do? Like, I don't know if you want to look that up. I've got Magic Circle. Yeah, if you want to look up Magic Circle and see if that prevents it. Because <coughs> that's something you would know. Uh, uh, to choose one of the following types of creatures, and it affects those creatures of the chosen type in a number of ways. Yeah, it Page two like five six. Does. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it does then. Okay. okay. Giants. <laughs> okay. So uh, Korak, uh, you. I'm just trying to think where exactly who would be, especially after uh -huh. conversations that Juto had. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cassandra leads you up to a room, a uh, little kind of room, very much like what your father's staying in, not too far, kind of a little priest's barracks kind of thing. She like knocks on it. Korak. Korak. Korak? There's no answer. Test the door. It's open. Room's empty. Bed's made. She like looks at the th four of you and is like, uh, I don't know where it is. Where's Lady Amy? Please. No, you guys wouldn't know. No, but well, we, no, they've, we've seen, seen, they, they've seen certain things before. Um, well, she's probably up in and a I shrine And I was there room. when... Uh, you, know. you were there. You, in fact, you, you and Juto are specific because you've seen it very closely when you came up to speak to her about your, fa about your father and Looking stuff. Looking yep. for Korak. I shall go and fetch him. Well, we should I just know. all go. Maybe then no. Lady Amy would help. And I'll, I will fetch them both. I kind of try and give you a... Juto, we are all very aware of the situation. <laughs> you don't need to wake up both of them. It doesn't make any Anora, sense. Laura, please hold these people. Cassandra's like, I don't know what they're talking about. I'm going to go and get them. Okay, try so you head, off, you head over to Lady Amy's shrine room. Um, stores closed. Knock on the door. Is not. There is like a murmur, kind of shuffling. Who is it? It is Juto. Is, is there something the matter, Juto? Is it urgent? We need yours, your council, and the council of Korak as well. Something very serious has happened. Oh, um, yes, certainly. Um, I will fetch him. Please, can you meet us? Uh, Shall we meet you in, in the main temple, in the main main chambers? Yes, please. Very well. <laughs> and then I sleep. And you just head off. There is, uh, you hear some shuffling before you do. Um, you return to the others, tell them that you'll meet them there. Um, and then perhaps five, eight minutes later... Uh, eight minutes. Korak, cool. wearing just like a loose shirt and trousers, no shoes, like just his bared claw feet, Lady Amy in a night nightgown, um, just head, make their way down. Um, both looking a little bit awkward. Together. Um, they, they kind of head down, but like one after the other, like one walking behind the other one kind of thing. Um, then he's saying, like, my friends, what, what is the matter? What, what, what is so urgent? Why did you need to wake up Lady Amy? Just needed to get Korak. She is a part of our alliance, and she is very powerful. It just seems silly to wake her up <clears> when <throat> she was deep in sleep. How can we help you? And Korak's just like, yes, <clears throat> how may we help? Also, it is possible that Lady Amy knows how to detect scrying. Ah. We're being scried upon. We don't know, well... Scrying? Yeah. Um, difficult to prevent, unfortunately. Generally, very powerful magic is needed. Um, Internet suggests mages private sanctum or non-detection. What's that? Yeah, non-detection would work, and private sanctum is a wizard spell which she can't cast. If you have some way of stopping iron cheese from listening. 
Non detection is <laughs> not <laughs> a cleric spell. You think they're Are you creating a us? Yeah. <laughs> no, non detection is not a cleric spell, so she can't help with that one. Uh, she considers for a moment and is just, ah, no, I know ways to prevent planar beings from appearing or uh, entering a certain location, but I'm afraid that um, as a cleric of, of, uh, of Bahamut, spells that prevent that, I'm more. I'm more skilled in healing arts than that sort of thing. Uh, wizards, um, sorcerers, perhaps, would be more aligned with that. I think if she sees us getting rid of the scribe, she'll know exactly what's going on anyway. And I've already talked a lot about what we're going to do. So, basically, we might take, be take, <laughs> take it um, that we could she, potentially. Lady Amy does hold up a hand. There is one thing I can do on it. I will be able to see if we're being scribed upon now. Yes. Very well. She utters a brief prayer. Great power, my great power, grant me true sight. And then she opens her eyes, and her eyes have turned to draconic eyes. <gasps> and she like looks around. I do not detect any senses here. I do not believe we're being scribed upon this very moment. Is, if this is something serious, then? Quite just like, yes, I'm afraid that magic is a little beyond me. You'll need to explain a little more. So mm. scrying is how I've been, how I saw my father and where he was, and mm. we were able to find him. We're being spied upon by Felania. Of the broken sky. And you mean in the magical sense, not in the traditional agents among us sense? In both senses, I guess. Yeah. Well, we knew that the, the latter was certainly involved. Um, the newer information is, of course, alarming, especially if there is a difficult way to prevent it from occurring. She appeared in Finney's bar. She while appeared before yeah, you. As some it was of, an illusion. Yeah. Interesting. And she spoke to us about how she's going to overthrow and she'd like us to step in and have the council surrender so that she can do a clean takeover of leadership without killing everybody. Try to insinuate. looks very serious. Yeah, it's either um, that or send her massive army and take it by force. He kind of like looks, this is, you now you spoke to me once outside of Veldaban that she has some sort of ship that flies upon the air. Yeah, we saw it leave after we uh, took down. She's and do got we know what people. other forces that she may command? Well, we know that she has these broken sky agents, but I thought that they were insurgents, terrorists, nothing more than criminals turned to her side. We've and already she... taken down a fire giant. And a and dragon. We know that there's at least one more giant with her. And they she have... has used dragons before and the rock. She seems yeah. to have an army as well. Lady Amy, at the mention of dragons, is just like. Uh, she has a dragon as an ally. There was a young dragon, but we don't know if there are more than that. We, if she's capable of taking control of that bird, then it, it was bigger than the whole of Valdaban. Her and Korak exchange a look. Korak is like, many of the dragons of Brasaris, many of the ancient dragons um, slumber. They are still asleep even before I left the, the kingdom. But I had heard word that several younger dragons had awoken and were serving the chromats, but also some of them had fled um, outside of Brasaris itself, taking root in mountains, seeking to gain their own power. Many of them have been worshipped by orc tribes and the like, seeking to perhaps raise their own forces. It could be that she has more of them. Well, let's just She's, expect the worst. She basically can get anything on her side whether by force or willingly. Then how can we possibly stand against her? We can't stand against her, and that's what we need to plan for. She mentioned her father was Hecaton, and he was a previous ruler of the Dawn Republic. Lady Amy is like Hecaton, I know that name. Uh, he was a young, very young giant back in my time, thousands of years before yours. A young giant, who a storm giant, I believe, one of the highest of their kind. He and the other giants, they were an ally at one time of the dragons um, against the demons. They helped us fight again in the ancient war. Uh, many of them riding dragons or uh, great rokes, uh, great eagles that they once commanded. I knew a Hecaton then, a young man, but very uh, ambitious. Um, but he had a great love for the smaller folk, for the dragonborn, and even for the, the humans that had been enslaved by the demons. Really? 
it seems strange that a daughter of his would be so antagonistic. Well, she says she wishes to lead like her father, and I don't think... I don't think that's her true Her mannerisms dictate that, and her actions that she's taken with the broken sky. She's killed people, she's experimented on children. She, she seems willing to do anything. Yeah, to get her... To get what she wants, which is just ruling. Mm. She has major mining operations as well that we've seen firsthand. Yeah. Major Korak's like, well, if she's been mining considerably, likely to equip soldiers with arms and armor. Um, what I mean, our amount has, we've managed to keep it in our hands, I imagine, but we knew that there have been broken sky attempts to wrest that from our control, and they control a large mine as well. But they've also, I mean, they've taken over cities that produce food and lumber. They've taken over cities that have um, certain affiliations with masonry and um, other activities. There were also Yuan Ti who were working on the Lightborn children. So that's another large force, potentially, that she has under her control, that she is allied with. If you were a group of people that had the ability to do something, what would you do? Quran looks quite serious for a moment. He takes a seat on one of the pews and kind of seems to be in contemplation. There, were a time, there was a time when I once wished for a more exciting life. Now I am not so sure that the wishes of such a young man are wise. He thinks for a moment. With the city as it is now, it is sure to fail. If the council do not give in to this Felania's demands now, then certainly it is only a matter of time. As soon as she begins attacking, their leadership will crumble. The people will revolt and they will likely join this giant woman. Even if she does offer death and slavery in the the face of war, perhaps that to many, that will not be so bad. Uh, the way I see it is either the city and the Republic must stand united and we must gain allies somehow. Um, allies from where? The other nations perhaps, um, perhaps the, the dwarves, the elves, anybody really that can offer aid. Um, we have many people here in Talisval. We have soldiers, men and women, that likely will outnumber whatever this Felania can throw at us, but obviously numbers will only take you so far. Uh, we have good walls, strong foundations, but if she can attack from the sky, then obviously that negates that. She did mention that Brosaris, if you wanted to destroy Brosaris, then your future plans might align, which indicates that she maybe is going to move to other nations. She offered the three of us deals. Mm -hmm. If we were to assist in getting the council to surrender to her now, she offered me aid in going to Prasaris and taking down the true Korak. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Which means she hasn't gone there yet. She mentioned as well that the door... That is good. If she were allied with Brasaris, there I was thinking. nothing we could hold against. Yeah, maybe the army was there, but maybe not. Well, no. she in fact mentioned that Brasaris was a threat to the borders. If it is can... something that I have considered for a long time. It is not... My brother will not sit idly by for long. Likely he is kept... Dragon won't live a long time. He knows that I am here, and he knows who I... the type of person I am. However, that will not keep him for long. It has always been a problem that I knew we would have to face one day. Is it also... A potential threat that when he sees the Dawn Republic in this warring state, he may take he the will opportunity yeah. and try and seize it for himself? Most certainly. Most certainly. Although, there will at least be, even amongst the Chromats, there is a certain dishonor in such a, a tactic. And if nothing else, the Dragonborn are honorable. Even amongst some of the fiercest Chromats, many of the Reds and the Blacks, uh, the blacks and the reds and the blues, my apologies. They will not appreciate such an underhand tactic. The difficulty is my brother listens to the counsel of his black mistress, and she, honor means nothing to them. Oh. But that does not mean to say it will be an easy fight. And whilst my brother holds power in the kingdom, it is not an absolute. There are generals that will fate, that will stand against him. There are generals that will try and see him stand down, wait until the war has been decided, and then fight the victor. They will see it as a test of strength. 
Hmm. Could we perhaps offer a truce with Brisaris? No. He just looks, he's like, they were AC that is weak, but also we cannot trust them. We cannot trust that kingdom. Not while my brother still reigns. Whilst the Chromats still have power, they cannot be trusted. How about, I mean, this could be reckless, but we stand the council down for Felania. She gains her leadership and we allow Brissaris to overthrow her and her Broken Sky military units. And we do the dishonest thing and remove Brissaris from leadership afterwards. She did say that if we needed to convince the council, we can always try and do the honorable thing later. She expects us to do something like that. Quiet looks at you, Lady Amy looks at you. Cam, perhaps, I understand where perhaps you come from, but a lot of people would die in such an event. A war is bad enough. Another we'd, war. We'd, we'd have, have to evacuate Talisman of the citizens. I believe we should do that anyway. If we move to evacuate, where do we take them to? Nowhere is safe for them. She will just follow us. If she is there are ruler in the sky. That we've cleared of the Yuan T. We can move them through the tunnels. The tunnels that Felania knows about. Felania is the first. I believe that the takes them to first light, yes. Yeah. Hardly a safe place. Mm. There is one small option. Uh, I'm not in the council as much these days, but I have heard that they are currently holding two emissaries from a southern kingdom known as the Unbroken Empire, um, the land south of the mountains near Greybell. They arrived angry that their ambassador has not been heard from. Their ambassador was situated in Greybell, which is now fallen silent. I do not know more details than that, but I have heard that the Unbroken Empire is, well, some would call it a godless place of heathens, but they are incredible warriors. They are dedicated to martial pursuits. Every citizen studies the art of warfare. They are incredibly formidable in combat. I was preparing scenarios where if they were to attack the Dawn Republic, but they have never shown aggression. The last time I spoke with an ambassador, they claimed that, what was it? They have a religion, no, not religion, a philosophy they call the path. The path teaches them to not ask for more than what they need. And what they need is apparently the lands that they already have. Mm. They had no desire to expand. So relationships were quite well. But they are an abrasive and, like I said, um, zealot people. And they are not very happy with the council as it currently stands. Also, their kingdom is considerably far to the south. We are talking 10, 12 days travel. Well, it's an option. It is at least an option you should consider. I must admit, I am <sighs> conflicted since the battle with Silval. I've begun to doubt what a use I am to the city. I am rusty as a warrior, and without the people and the council, I am in no position to lead. Ha. I disagree wholeheartedly, Korak. I think this is the opportune time to take matters into your own hands and be a beacon of hope for the people and be the champion that is needed against this corruption and this potential threat. We need someone to stand behind uh, a hero, if you will. Perhaps. A champion of the people. The people know you. Well, let me ask you this. I was the one that empowered the council. For years, I told them that they should take control of the city, that, it was, that they should be the ones to look after the people. If I force my way back into control now, is there much of a difference between me and this Felania? You do not need to be in control. All you need to do is be the rallier of the people. And do you think that that would be enough? Do you think the council will allow me to do that? It is me or the council that will lead this city. I think if you get the people on your side, the council will have no choice but to listen. The, the council people, are putting curfews in place. The people already dislike the council. If the people disobey the orders of the council, what power does the council have anymore? And those people would be breaking laws, laws that I created and laws that you could remove again. Your opinion on the world is a very fluid one, Mr. Buckland, and it is not one that I necessarily, I may not personally agree with, but I see the merits in what you say, and I see the intent of what you say. 
But you are speaking to a different man than you. I am not comfortable with the idea of creating a law to be followed only to dismiss it when it suits me, when it might suit the... When it suits the people. When people's lives are at stake, if you, would you rather obey a law and have many massacred because they listen to the council? Mm. If you listen to the streets, the streets whisper your name. We have been back for only two days and everything I hear, everything we all hear, is that the people believe in you and they believe the council is corrupt. They wish to see you back leading them. We also know that Felania has people in the council. Yes, that is always a problem. Remove the council. He sits for a moment. Lady Amy puts her hand on his shoulder. You have extra strength now as well, with the friends that you... It's not always about a matter of strength. I will put it this. The people should decide. I will speak with the council, and we will make declarations to the public. And the people shall choose who they wish to lead them. Will you tell them about Felania and her offer? I will tell them that the city faces a great threat and that it is likely, the likely events. I will be honest. I cannot say the same that the council will be. But I cannot, in my heart, force myself into a position. If the people choose, that is different. But I will not usurp the council that I created in a city that I once created to be served by people like them. However, I do understand that what you say, laws that get people killed are not necessarily laws to be followed. And I don't think those laws enacted by the council recently are the laws that you helped instate. No, but the ones I helped instate certainly give them the power to do so. But I... In my heart, I cannot accept anything less than if the people choose me to lead them, I will. Do you not think your life is a threat, uh, is in danger, if you go to the council and try and make a mutual agreement? He smiles. My life is always in threat, Mr. Bockman. My life has been threat since the day I was born. I pose a great threat to powerful people across this world. My life is not as important, and he gestures, to the lives of the people here in this plan, in this place, into this kingdom. It's very important to rally them together, and it'd be a waste if something were to happen before anything happened. Then I shall ask you all to endeavour that that does not occur. We also have to look at our other options, which is why I'm saying you remain here and be a voice of the people mm -hmm. while we potentially look at this different land, this nation, that could help us. Of course. Perhaps the frost giants near the Winter Spire. I would ask that you seek out any and all allies you can think of. Whoever, whomever. There are certain prices I do not feel we should pay, but I trust in your wisdom to such matters. If we are to fight against this, frost, against this giant, this Felania, then we will need everyone and everything we can. I also suggests that perhaps you, if she knows as much about us as you say, perhaps this time we learn as much about her. Where is she located? Where is this airship? What forces does she command? Any of this information will be invaluable to us in the days to come. She mentioned she ru she's the ruler of the Sky Kingdom of Ios. Uh, Amaryllith is just like, yes, that is the name of a giant kingdom. It is... Um, it is in the material plane, but it borders on another as well. It borders on a demi-plane um, called Ios. Uh, it, she points up. You have seen the clouds and they pass through our world. Ios is a kingdom that lives above that. Uh, there are giant castles for the cloud giants, but there is also passages, uh, ways that can descend deep into the earth where the, the stone giants live, deep into the seas where the storm giants come from. It is a magical kingdom, one of... Uh, it connects many of the planes together at once. Are you able, or do you know, how to travel between planes? I do, actually. I have been... Um, since you rescued me, I have been catching up on my studies with um, Bahamut, and I have been practicing and learning new incantations. 
and I believe it is something I can accomplish. It is a very powerful spell, um, and I can only perform it once a day, but I can, I can travel to other planes if need be. Would you be able to transport me to the arboreal plane? Uh, yes. My, I can take up to eight people to a plane with me, but I cannot return till the following day. Um, if it is just you and I to go, then that so be it, but it would perhaps be safer to take allies. Hmm. Where what are you plane? going? Arborea is not a place, um, it is not a safe land. It is a land of intense emotions um, and intense landscapes. The storms there are worse than anything here in the plains. Their fires are hotter and larger. Their earthquakes more devastating. It, it is a place of extremes. Um, the people that roam there are passionate about many things, including warfare. Mm. What, what, why are you going there? Why do you need to travel to such a place? It is where I went when I died. Oh, what? And there resides a powerful being who taught me how to be better. Without my Guandao, I and given the rising threats we are coming to face, I feel I need to see her again to ask for help and to show her how much I've grown since I last saw her. On the same vein, when Crown Rand was finally removed, she came to me in a dream and she asked me to seek her out when I needed her. I feel perhaps now I need her more than anything. Mm. Well, if she's as powerful as you say, yeah, we could do with that help. Uh, Miss Jean, I know the plane Arborea. Do you remember anything about where this person is? I need, if I do not have a specific location, I could transport us anywhere within the plane itself. I need to, something to pinpoint upon. She resided on the top of a mountain that was made of four elements. That is probably sufficient enough to give me a location. Um, it is likely that is the only one amongst the plane itself. Sounds I will take you there if you ask me to, but if there are other matters you need to attend to, obviously. My, my powers are here at your command. You know that I cannot fight directly, so whatever aid I can offer you is gladly given. So is, is this like a quick stop, hey? Well, it would take at least a day to get back again. Yes, I will need another day to rest, to gather the energies to cast the spell again. And when you get there, you imagine this person is just going to be like, yep. Let's save the Dawn Republic. That is not always the way of masters, but perhaps it is better than nothing. Mm, I agree. My friends, Raymond, uh. <laughs> I will not ask you to join me. It is a strange place, from what I remember. But if you wish to travel with me, I would be honored. Do we have to be dead to go there? No. Lady Amareth is like, no. Then why wouldn't we go? Sounds like a great holiday. Mm, yes. There are worse planes to travel to, I will tell you that. It is a breathtaking land, if nothing else. I'd Jute. like to keep my breath. <laughs> Juto's just thinking about the winged elves in armour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I know nothing of this place. Korak is like... Think on everything that we have discussed. You are wise. He doesn't look at Cam when he says that. He looks more at Elora. Uh, and I know you to have good heart. I am glad for your counsel in this matter. You are perhaps some of the greatest warriors and spellcasters that we have in, in the city. If anybody is to protect it, it is you and what allies you can muster. The temple, I'm sure the High Priest and Lady Amarith will gladly allow you to meet here if you need to discuss anything further. Be careful of what we speak. We do not know who is listening. I suggest, especially if you are seeking allies, seek them in private. Do not bring them to the city until you are certain that we need them. Lady Amy? Yes? When we return? Just assume every time we return, we've got some vital piece of confidential information. I can check to see if we are being scried upon, yes. Because I'm going to forget. 
but if you could just do that sweep. Of course. I assume that as Mr. Ferrohorn has joined you for this matter, that he is as privy to information as the rest of you, correct? Oh yeah. Then perhaps he should be aware of Otherwise something. he'd be dead. Mr. Ferrohorn, would you accompany Dang. me uh, outside for a moment? Of course. I. <laughs> She's going to kill you now. You. I come with me. Okay. <laughs> do not be alarmed. I'm she gonna places go with a hand you. on your shoulder. I'm okay. going to sneak I'm behind just because I, I want to watch. watch. Yeah. It's been nice, Raymond. Uh, bye. Do not listen friends. to Mr. Buckland. Can I have the clothes back? I still have a receipt. What? Yeah, no, I need these. <clears throat> Perhaps you, you should not terrify. Recently? Not, not going to pee yourself? I might do. <laughs> What's going on? She takes you, she leads you outside into a kind of enclosed um, kind of garden, mm. uh, but it's more of like a stone meditation <laughs> garden. It's quite large. Um, she, Korak moves like a few things out of the way, like benches and plant pots and clears like a huge, enormous space. I'm going to sort of slowly I'm gonna like put back him away. Just keep him okay. in the garden. Okay. This <laughs> is safe. Stop him running away. Uh, Cassandra is also looking like looking around to make sure that nobody else is watching. And then she gives Lady Amy a nod. And you watch as Lady Amaryllis, this kind of very tall, slender, tan skinned woman with these white tattoos, quite big, you know, bust and like long wavy hair, very attractive, beautiful woman, <laughs> morphs in a kind of sudden flash and turns into a enormous silver dragon. What? Uh, <laughs> her form becomes that of brilliantly scaled silver shining, uh, silver scales, blue eyes that just are draconic in nature what? as she looks dragon. down. What are the... I trust that you will keep this a good secret. Oh, What's I will. Uh, Cassandra. <laughs> Korak, you all know. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm afraid that we open all the door know. back to like Cam and everyone. I'm like, okay. guys, you. Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, like, all... no, we're watching. Yeah, everybody's we're watching. All there. Yeah. You, we all. This is always a. I mean, she's. And you kind of hear like this rumble, like as her breath inhales in and out, and then in uh -oh. a flash, she seems to okay. shrink back down to this beautiful woman in this um, flowing gown, and uh. she bows her head. Amarillith. <laughs> Amarillith is my draconic name. I am a silver dragon from many, many, many years ago. Uh, More these, than three. She points to Elora, uh, Cam, and Juto. The three of them freed me from a temple where I was being held in stasis. Uh, I've been learning a lot of your time, but I am still quite new to it. Uh, you should know I have sworn an oath, which means that I cannot fight. I do not harm living creatures. Yeah. She can she, heal, though. She I heals. can. I bring my magic and the power of Bahamut with me, but... So you are aware, and so, as a point of trust. Yeah, Bahamut, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I... I am not Bahamut, you understand this, yes? No, no, but I just, I'm going to need another oh. one of those symbols. <laughs> and a book. Cassandra's like, I'm sure we can figure that. Did you actually read it the last time? I'll read it this time. You should. Are you okay? Yeah, you're fine. No. Okay. I'm just, I'm just gonna whisper to Lady Amy. I could still take you. <laughs> she just like chuckles and like gives you a side look. Um, and Korak is also like, well, you should also perhaps know, Mr. Farahorn, if we are being honest, I am not actually Korak. Um, Hold on. <laughs> I, have a, I have a twin brother who currently rules the Draconic Kingdom of Brasaris. I did hear you say real Korak early, and I was yes. going to jump in. I thought that perhaps you might be confused by this. A little. I have a twin brother. He is um, what we call a chromatic dragonborn. Uh. He is dark of heart and selfish and gluttonous. And he's the one the ruling Brasaris. He is a powerful sorcerer king, uh, and he wields great martial power as well. Yeah. I was to be killed, but I fought for my freedom in gladiatorial arena. Him and his people enslaved tieflings. Juto was the one. The chromatic of dragonborn in particular are. The metallic dragonborn wished to free the tieflings after some time, but yes, the chromatics are. The first time Juto met Korak, she tried to kill him. Oh. oh that is true. Okay, and. The true Korak killed my parents and enslaved me for years. Isn't it confusing having a Korak in, well, ex control of Talisval and a Korak in control of Prasaris? What is your real name? Why are you a... And I'm like pointing to Amy. He also, is there anything head. else you guys want to include yes. me in? <laughs> Master, Master Buckland and Lady Galanadel have not actually heard my real name before, but Miss Jing knows it. My real name is Adric. Ma Adric. 
sorry. Like, look <laughs> There's something funny, Mr. Buckler. Yeah. <laughs> Andric. Adric. It does mean something quite humiliating and draconic, but I have accepted that. Can I roll like a language history check? I just want to. Do you speak draconic? No. Then nope. Damn it. <laughs> you don't know shit. Do you speak draconic? No. No. Does anybody speak draconic? Celestial. No, nope, but not. Infernal. Hadric. Mm. Adric. I'm going to call you Korak. As Miss Jing has Korak. done for some time. Whatever it means, you don't deserve it. He nods his head. You don't deserve that name. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> He just looks at you, like little <laughs> narrow draconic eyes. Oh boy. Mm. Korak, thank you for empowering us, for guiding us, for sending us on this journey. It is not me you should be thanking, Mr. Buckland, it is you. This Felania appeared before you. She made this deal because she is afraid of you. You understand that. She would not have tried to bring you onto her side if she did not feel that you could swing this in your in, against yeah. her. This is what I was thinking. If she had corruption within the council, and she could bring down a council. I mean, she's got an army, right? And she's mm. got all these people, she's got the broken sky. I imagine mm. that she has had difficulties in mustering these forces. There this must be why I think maybe, the, maybe her council members that are on her side have been, are worried about being found out. Maybe they're being too Also, I don't think everyone maybe obvious. likes the idea of Falania's leadership. Possibly maybe we can so. break down that morale. From what my inside. rudimentary experience, mustering forces of a, size, of a certain size takes time and it's not unlikely that she has had to spend considerable wealth to do this as well. Also, the manner in which she's gaining her leadership, I'm sure there's a lot of displeasure. Possibly. But also, you know, slavery and whipped into shape. But if there was any opportunity of escape or rising up against her, like the dwarves that were, you know... Perhaps her agents in the council can be turned against her. Perhaps so. We need to identify exactly which ones they Such are. espionage is perhaps a little beyond me. I am not one for subtlety. Um, but, yes, most certainly, if you think that you can do accomplish some feats. If she's coming to us to try and get us to make the council see her side, then perhaps the agents within the council have been more obvious to the point that maybe Dermot or one of the others has seen or a has a stronger suspicion since we've been gone of who it might be. To ask her biggest threat to do something for her, that's a very desperate plea, isn't it? It shows that if nothing else, perhaps her bravado of being willing to kill many, many innocents, perhaps she is not as cold-blooded as she wants to appear. Mm. If she could get an easy victory, it means that perhaps her resolve at such violent means is not complete. Tell you what, we'll go on holiday with Juto, bring back the master, and in the meantime, you could be speaking with the council to try and get this vote mm -hmm. in yes. action. I will also endeavor to make that happen. Scoping out the council, talking to them. And I will speak with Dermot. His skills are more suited to such a task than I. I assume... Lady Amy can also perform certain rituals to, perhaps, if scrying is a, what the enemy is using against us, perhaps we can perform the same back. I think it's only fair and right that the people here are the only people that can ever be trusted. He looks around, Cassandra nods as well. Everybody else that is, is fair. a potential threat. I would include Alfred and Dermot within this. Dermot is a close friend. Dermot has been good to us so far, Cam. I know that he calls you names, but... Yeah, he does. He Just be has careful. been trustworthy and he... He knows the suspicions we have already. And if you have anyone that you deeply trust, that you trust truly in your hearts, I'm sure that they can be trusted as well. Barris. Who? What? <laughs> oh boy. I don't know who that is. Is that somebody you've mentioned before? Yeah. Oh. A kid that's risen up through the ranks, led his own espionage team. Oh, no, yes, unit. yes, yes. The young lad we sent off with the Rangers. Yes, yes. Oh, if anyone is a man of the people, it's Barris. Get him on your side and he'll get the military on Very your well. side. We also know a fantastic fighter. Where's Gronka just 
Out of interest. <laughs> a half-orc woman that you yes. rescued from Velderban. Mm. She was recovering. She took some uh, a leave of absence from the forces for a time, I believe. Uh, yes, yeah, so we could ask her for assistance. If anyone is going to hate the Broken Sky. If you believe she can be trusted, I will reach out. Another half-orc's Falk, if you can find him. Very he much was quite neutral. I would consider draft up what list of allies you can think of. All will be welcome. We will think about this while we Lady travel Laura, to... Lady Laura, I know that you have returned with your father. Perhaps when he is rested, you can speak with him and your mother. See if the Moon Spy will offer assistance. We can speak to Autumn and Winter. The others we haven't found, but... Perhaps there might be option, opportunities there to make allies there as well. We have to keep moving. We have to, as soon as we've got one, we move to the next. There is no resting for this party anymore. If you wish, I would recommend speaking with the ambassadors from the Unbroken Empire. The council is currently holding them, and as I understand, they are quite angry at that. I think we should go with some power behind us, so maybe with the master. Very well. And I believe that they would respect Miss Jing's um, school of combat. They seem to follow a very similar method. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them in particular, she is supposedly the other's bodyguard, but she wears no armor and carries no weapons, which is interesting and somewhat intimidating. I'm sure there's other friends as well that we can call upon. Good. It's very. In either case, Korak, the first you are the true ruler of Talisval. If the people declare it, then very well. Needless to say. I think it's in the people's best interest for them to declare it, and I think you should try your very best. I will, of course, try my best. Well, easily the... It must be the people's decision. Just remember, the council you're up against is not the council you put in place. I know. But I must do things my way, Mr. Buckland, for my own peace of mind and heart. Good luck. I put out a hand. <laughs> Massive clawed hand. I'm trying to be... <sighs> You are the... Oh! Just hold it in. Yeah, okay. You are the second greatest man I've ever known, Korak. Second only to... Oh, uncle! I'm going to write down my uncle on the list. What? what? My as uncle. An, as an ally. 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 The greatest man. <clears throat> You're pretty good, though. <laughs> <laughs> Your respect is well noted. Oh, he'd be great. I haven't heard from him in years. Uh, he turns to the two of uh, Elori, bows his head no nobly, bows his head to Juto as well. Uh, Lady Amy goes around for hugs. Uh, she is a hugger. Uh, <laughs> wide open. Straight into the chest, just like bringing you right in. We'll Elora, meet again. Oh. Everyone else. I'll try and hold on longer. She's, yeah, you're, she's like, oh, yes. <laughs> and then she like pries her arm, your arms off you and gives I'll them back. I'll be back, don't you worry. And then I'll be back. Hugs around to everyone else. Um, and Cassandra just kind of gives you the curt nod. She's like, oh, I have to go back on guard duty now, I suppose. All right, bye. Cass? Has, um, mm. has, yes? Has my father woken up yet at all, or is he still? He's still, Lady Emerith is like, he's woken up, but he quickly fell asleep. He ate, uh, drank. We had to ensure he did not eat too much, but he is sleeping. Um, he is better. Speak to him tomorrow morning, okay. once he's rested. I'm going to give her his sword. Takes it gently. Don't let him use it yet, you know, because he will probably try. But she nods. It could give him some strength, though. He actually, she hands it to Korak, and he's just like, I'll make sure the old fool doesn't use this. Me and him have got a lot to learn about warriors of a certain age not getting involved in such matters. He's a stubborn man, but a good one. As am I. He's very stubborn. Cass? Yeah? I know you love guarding doors. And yeah, I love it. It's the best job ever. I don't see that as your future career. I see you standing with us. Yes. Uniting the people, mm -hmm. getting powerful warriors on our side. Anyone in particular? Because obviously, obviously the paladins of Bahamut will stand with you. You stand on the side of justice. But we need a paladin of Bahamut to come with us. When? Now. To where? Holiday. She just shakes her head. She's like, I have to protect Korak. I have to protect Lady Amy. There's a lot of things I have to do. Maybe if we go to this. Maybe you could assist with drumming up support for Korak within the city. Of course. Get but Jonathan to my, guard the door. Good. My place is here. Good. Not just guarding doors in the city, I mean. Um, and get the people on Korak's side. I will also reach out to some of the other temples. Um, not all of them will favour us. I know Erathis is very much on the side of the council, 
But there are others, the Raven Queen, I'm sure, uh, Jonathan they have and the others. Them in the past. Indeed. Um, the Church of Paylor, I'm sure, will be looking for ways to redeem themselves in the public light. I will speak to their leaders as best I can. Good. I wish you all luck. And to you as well. Yes. They stalk off. Go on. Uh, you see, like, so Lady Amy turns around and says, I suggest you get some sleep. The trip to the plains can be dangerous. Oh. You will need to be ready. Um, also, it is better if Lady Alora speaks with her father before we travel, just in case. I will see you tomorrow morning. And then she heads off following Korak. <laughs> Mm. They just head off. They I guess they've got other matters to discuss. Yes. Mm. Mm. Very well. Uh, Shall we rest here? Because Cass looks over and just shakes her head. Why not? Go back to your house. Felania was there. Right. Did she attack you? No, but she could be listening to me dreaming. Oh. How terrible that she hears about you jacking off to Lady Amy all the time. What? That doesn't I'll walk out. What does jacking off mean? Uh, ask <laughs> Reynard. And then she's like, shove you towards Reynard. <laughs> Bye, get out of the temple now. Bye. <laughs> Cass doesn't even try and move Alora. She just looks at the belt. You can make your own way out. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> she just like gives you a curt nod. So jacking off is uh, when... <laughs> <laughs> and on the, re- on the way back, does Reynard explain to Juto... Truthfully or...? Uh, pretty truthfully. Do you kind of use cul- like, lang- like vague language? Kind yeah, of I use some, some of my code language. Okay. Can I catch up to Cam while... And leave He's like, them? stropping... Here. Storming off. Every night. <laughs> I'm just talking to myself. Cam, I want yes. to apologise to you. Why? Because Silval almost killed you, and that was my fault. Well, it was a battle. Uh, I was obviously extremely preoccupied saving everybody. So there was moments, obviously, where, you know, people were distracted, and that's fine. I've been in lava before, I think. It's normal. Reynard's been in lava. Yes, but he wasn't unconscious, face down in lava. This is true, but you know, I've faced worse. Yes, but it was my fault, and I'm sorry, because she, I thought she would hurt me, and that's fine, but hurting you and Juto and Reynard, that's not okay. But the actions you took immediately, you saved us, and that's what's important. It's not that you intended for me to die, it's that you tried everything you could to save, and that's what's important. Making mistakes is part of the being a human elf. An elf. <laughs> and we learn from them and we get stronger. And now you're a stronger elf. Maybe a bit too strong. Maybe too strong. No more arm wrestles for now. You may lose again and I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> so. I don't want to break your arm. But that won't happen. I do. <laughs> Either way, let's focus on the positives. We're alive, your father is alive, and we're going to die by Felania if we don't do something about it. So let's go do something about it. That sounds a pretty good point to end today's episode, actually, and then we're gonna do some donations. That was a pretty good line to end out on. Uh, we're all gonna man. die I was gonna anyway. say something about jacking off, but I think yeah, that yeah. one. <laughs> that's a good way, I think that that's a better way to, to end that. Um, you can leave it to the audience's imagination of what Cam returns to the inn and does that now. It is the other day, yes. Yeah, so it, it would be. Do, do, do you have like the um, like because of the events with Felani? Do you have like a weird nightmare where you like it starts being Lady Amy and then it turns into Felani? <gasps> no, no. <laughs> no. And then it but turns still into wakes up slightly aroused. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what? No. Sigh. Unzip. Okay, uh, so that's it for today's episode. Um, I don't think we have the iPad. So Becky, I don't know if you can bring up the old um, donations on the TV screens. Um, I know the URL if not. Run in and I can do it on my phone, if not. If you can get it on your phone. I'm not sure how to okay. That's okay, no worries, we'll get it up on the phone. Yeah, I don't know where the iPad's gone, so... I'll um, sort it out. It's gone missing. It's probably taken out when all of the stuff was going yeah, on in so. the room, to be honest. Um, 
So, yeah, we don't forget on Wednesday on yeah. twitch.tv forward slash DND, we're going to be creating characters and doing the introduction to our brand new mini series campaign. It's called High Rollers Dead Reckoning, um, and it's going to be over with Wizards. It is a prequel. It's kind of my, my take on a prequel to a Tomb of Annihilation adventure. It's going to be a bit different, actually. It's going to be a little bit different to what Dragon people might expect. Dragon Knight. No, Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight. You're playing Dragon Knight. Um, Kim went time, through Mark. and looked at any class that was OP and was like, Mark! I didn't know they were going to be OP. I just <laughs> picked the ones I like the look of. You basically Knight. picked all the ones that were like, I want to be a dragon! I want to be a gold super warrior! <laughs> mim, 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 mim. Um, basically Whoa. picked all the weeaboo shit. Uh, what time is that on Wednesday? That now? is at uh, 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. BST or 10 a.m. till 12 p.m. B uh, PDT. PDT, Pacific Daylight Time. I'm pretty sure that's what they're on at the moment. Oh, have they changed then? I might think be so. Might be uh, different. But yeah, Look that, that on that's on Wednesday. Things. We'll tweet about it. We'll do loads of stuff about it. Oh, it's yeah. on D&D. Don't forget, that's the most important thing. D Go and follow twitch.tv forward slash DND. And also follow them on Twitter. It will also be uploaded to their YouTube page as well. So you can check that out. Um, I, I did it. it. And then we got some donations. Yep. So that Chris Trot is going to start with. I'll pass this around. Thank you to Nightjar for donating, saying, Praise Avandra. I miss you guys so much. Glad to have you all back. Thank you very much, Nightjar. Um, Rom Ra Pra donated. Well, I'll just pass it do you around. Do you want to read a couple and then pass it around? It'll be right. too, too late now. now. Rom Ra Pra donated, Done. saying, I missed you guys. I've started writing my own module, and that's been fun. But actually running it for people every other week makes me nervous. I really appreciate this show on another level now. It's difficult to do what he does. Yeah, oh. and writing it down is very hard as well. So yeah. that's another factor of the Wednesday, this new Dead Reckoning, is I'm going to try and write it up so you guys can download it at a later date and play it yourselves as well. Yeah, maybe read a couple then. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I think so. Like, if we just read like a two or three or something. And then Tic Tac Woe donated $33. Oh, at long wow. last, I'm finally able to watch you guys live. Thanks yeah, for all the yeah, cracking yeah. content. Fantastic way to round off the week. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Olorenve donated with no message as well. And I'm sorry Thank you. Uh, Jellyfish Tree donated. This is my first time being able to watch High Rollers live as I am now in St Andrews for uni. St Andrews! Uh, you... I went to school there. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you guys are all amazing and I love you all. Even Trot. Aww, wow. Isn't that nice? Thank it you. wasn't an even Tom. <laughs> oh, you're oh, included in you're the part of the core. Yes. I'm the outside. Yeah, <laughs> you're a big boy. even trot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nightjar has nice going, oh, I don't finish work until six most Wednesdays. So it'll be the VODs for me. Still, it'll be something to watch during the week to say my high rollers cravings. Any news of what might be happening uh, for high rollers at MCM? Also, you're all looking at gorgeous and fetch. Uh, no firm plans, but I know Mike, um, we're pretty much, I think we're likely to do Saturday and Sunday signings. Mike's pretty confident we'll get to do a live show on the Sunday, but we don't have times and stuff or any firm details yet. We're all going to be there, right? I believe we all will all be I there. Might, I might even be there on the Friday because... I, I will you. likely be there on Friday, but there won't be a signing, I believe. Yeah, so I'll be we'll be floating around. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've said I'd like to go, but Mike hasn't told me the days yet. So we'll, I don't think we'll chase that up with him probably sat Sunday. He's been busy. We'll yeah, I think, sure. I think yeah. for you it will be the High Rollers Days, basically. Yeah. Sure. Well, I specifically said I want to turn up for High Rollers Days, so yeah. I will be there yeah. for High Rollers Days. Right. High Rollers will be there. Jerking off to Trot has donated. Nice. We're back, boys! My god, how I've missed you guys playing D&D. Trot, I came thrice when I saw your gym progress photo you posted. You're yeah. uh, Katie, you grow more beautiful every day, it <laughs> seems. <laughs> Kim, nice hair, much better than Hazel's. Uh, <laughs> no, no, not Hazel, sorry, Mark's. <laughs> what was I about to say? And then he says, more Hazel, fuck yeah! I love you guys. Yeah. Oh, well, because you get all the good comments. Oh, yeah. Even Mark. Uh, even more. <laughs> Hashtag even more. And finally for me, our dent artificer. It took me all summer, but I'm caught up. So first time watching live here. Hello. Uh, awesome job, all of you. Thanks for sustaining my D&D cravings between my group's sessions. Now to watch Uncharted Territory. Yay. Also, Mark, Enjoy. I hope you're doing better. Hashtag teach Cam to write. I can write. Well, you could probably have really English. terrible handwriting. Though. Is it worth Just saying like whether or not the... First season of Uncharted Territory is vital, or 
For What's the, that? Is it worth saying that Uncharted Territory is vital to watch no. prior No, to it's one? not, actually. That's a point. So uh, you, you don't need to have seen Uncharted Territory to enjoy Dead Reckoning. They are two separate, separate stories. But you can go and check out all of Uncharted Territory. It's now available as a VOD, either on Yours Class Live or on the uh, D&D YouTube as well. It's kind of all based around the same campaign, yeah. but yeah. loosely. Yeah, so um, yeah. Uncharted Territory is kind of like a whistle-stop guide to Tomb of Annihilation, which you can now go and play yourselves with a lot of stuff changed. Yeah. Dead Reckoning is kind of the rogue one to a new hope of uh, Tomb of Annihilation. It's kind of like a prequel. Yeah. And Uncharted was only 10 episodes, so you should just watch it. And this one will be yeah, 11 plus episodes plus four. character creation. So it's about 12 episodes total. So yeah, the new one will be. Yeah, the new one's 12 episodes. Yeah. Uh, Angelus Lucius has donated. Hey, Rollers, a great episode once again. Love you guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Um, come on, Mark is red. It goes. Sky Silverwing donated. Uh, far away across the ethereal sea, a planetar lane lands before a being like an old man. Is this the item young Evandra told me of? The angel nods, handing in the box. The deity places the box on a shielded plinth. Welcome, Crown Rent, to my collection. Oh, oh, oh nice. very cool. I like that. Mirnis donated. Hi Mark, have you heard of the RPG Numenera? Its mechanics sound interesting but strangely simplistic. Also, can you recommend a YouTube channel that talks about tabletop gaming, perhaps on a weekly basis? Mm. Well, first, first thing to say, I have heard of Numenera. I haven't had a chance to check it out yet. You were looking at I Numenera, wasn't you? I was looking at you? running a campaign with that. Is that the one with the mouse people? No, but it's That's Starfinder, the one I think. where you essentially jump dimensions. Oh. It's kind of like yeah. so far set in the future, it's the past. Yeah. And it's really weird. It's kind oh. of like Sliders. Remember that film? Oh, uh, yeah. show? I know the, what you um, mean, yeah. And also, if you really want a channel about uh, weekly tabletop gaming, you should check out Tabletop any. Weekly. It's my channel. Um, <laughs> Craig Me Up. That's a good channel. <laughs> Craig Me Up is also a very funny channel. It doesn't have tabletop stuff. It doesn't have tabletop stuff. Tabletop <laughs> Weekly, Tabletop Weekly on YouTube and Twitch. Nice. Tucker 2025, I'll rip this one I'll pass it over to drop. Cool. I shudder to think what would have happened if it was Kayla and not Juta who came across a tied up Korak. I sure miss her rage horniness. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Damn. There's a time and a place. A time and a place, Tucker, come on. When it's an unconscious being up dragon yeah. hanging from chains in a place full of lava and evil people. I mean, people. she probably would have at least made a joke about it. I'm sure she would have but then touched him up, it. yeah. I would have, afterwards, when everything's safe and he's all better and conscious, conscious being the key word here, guys. I just realised this. You're playing the same. Weird. Uh, Metamanu has dona donated a half hundo. Wow. wow. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Metamanu. Half hundo. Welcome back. 20 days, damn. I can't wait for the next spin off. I already know it will be awesome. I love you all. Thank you so much. Okay. Hope so. Um, I'm going to rattle through this because there's actually quite a few guys. Oh, wow. mm. The Nord's House donated $6.66. Oh, yeah. I'm on the beast! Got love all the wonderful montages. You're welcome. <laughs> the Game Guide 415 donated. Hi, Rollers. So glad to have you all back after 20 days of agony. <laughs> I know it's a bit late, but I want to say congrats on the conclusion of Uncharted Territories. Thank you. Um, and now I'm really looking forward to Dead Reckoning. Hashtag Roll on Sunday, hashtag seating for Hazel. <laughs> we can't fit three seats in here. We haven't moved chairs in before, but we just can't fit this we can't other fit. seat. We'll figure and the other, out. the other small chairs, which I'd be happy to sit on, are broken. We're still waiting on this bigger table. And, and oh. proper chairs. Yeah, this is comfortable chair. We're enough. getting there. We're going to get cool walls. <laughs> we're going to get cool lights. <laughs> then we're going to get a cool table yeah. and cool chairs. One day. Yeah. One day. One day. Hopefully <laughs> next week we will have the background. Then. Hopefully. Zephry012 donated. Hey Rollers, it's been a while. I tried to catch you live today, but it seems my phone data was very uncooperative on the train home. Mm. Oh well, I also recently found a new job. Congrats. Congrats. So I have some money to throw at you at long last. Thank you very oh, much you. for picking us. I'll do one more. Lou the Pigeon donated saying, hey my dudes. Guess my who dudes. survived Freshers Week? Me, barely. I think some of us suffer from Freshers. Yeah. Um, Our neighbours suck. Our neighbours are loud. <laughs> we have new neighbours, they're students. Uh, tomorrow Jeez. I'll be having my first lecture on games design. Nice. Ooh. I found some fellow nerds and I have a good feeling about the year to come. Sweet, enjoy it. Uh, nice. Proudly on display my HR poster in my room. Aww. Thank you very much. Get, get, check out your uni, see if you've got an RPG club it's, as well. Oh, it's um, extended. Zephyr012 oh. again. Oh, by the way, remember that 12 Charisma Brawler Warlock I told you about? Tragically, he died last week, oh, damaging no. a dragon so much it attacked him instead of a literal tank. Crazy. Yeah. But his new character is a pyromaniac engineer Kobold. So that's going to be fun. That's nice. Fun. Cool. Enjoy. Sounds like jungle. Sweet. 
Uh, the wonky Jewfish has donated, saying, Dear High Rollers, just wanted to say how much I love watching. You guys have seen me through dropping out of uni, then finding a great job and a salary to a company. This is the least I can do. Also, buy Cam a goddamn beret. Viva la revolution. Nice. <laughs> Hashtag Cam Guevara. Cam Guevara. <laughs> Nice. Uh, Yin Yanger has donated, oh, yeah. it's great. saying, Hey Rollers, hope you're doing well. I'm doing fine. Just picking up after Hurricane Harvey. Oh, Had 13 wow. people and one dog live in one house during a week and a half while wow. the bio behind the house rose above the fence. But night things are fine now. Wow, I'm glad to hear that. What that's, that's like, insane. yeah. Just the stress um, and the just, ugh. Yeah, like just preparing for hurricanes. Yeah. It's nuts. Uh, we get pissed off at rain. Yeah. Best of luck to anyone suffering from any kind of yeah. natural disaster so, yeah, anywhere so in the world right now. Sure, yeah. Yeah. So um, many going on. Techie Reed has donated saying, Welcome back. Good to see the crew back to normal. Never trust the princess. Um, princess Alora. So this is, you want um, to take up on her lovely offer? It's a nice offer. Yeah. Um, Five hundred dollars? What? What? Five hundos? Quinto hundo? Jimmy Holy Kibax shit. has donated $500 saying hello from New Jersey. Wish I could tune in live more often, but darn work is always in the way. Love and appreciate all that you guys do. So here's a bit of something for a you. Bit. A bit. Sorry. A bit. A bit. Don't worry about if it. That, <laughs> if that's a mistake, no hard feelings. If you put an extra zero, zero on the end of that, just, just tell us and stuff, I mean, you know. There are like, I will pass on. You know, are you sure? New <laughs> yeah. Jersey. Beck, if you see anyone in it's chat nuts. freaking out now, yeah, just let us know. Freaking yeah. Out. Uh, oh my god, five hundred? <laughs> no, I'm in fifty! I'm, I'm in five. fifty! Yeah. yeah, confirmation would be well, good. Well thank you anyway. Uh, yeah, fifty pence! So <laughs> That's insane. Daft Day 41 donated. Hi Rollers is back. It is uh, it is going to be twice weekly rollers. The Bears are beating the Steelers for now. Everything is fine. Except for the fact that Tom doesn't have a proper chair. <laughs> come on guys, do we need to break out Justice for Hazel again? Please do, but I don't think anything's going to come from that one. I'm so, we get so glad the Bears and Steelers had a good game. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see the fucking score of the Ravens game. American football. Uh, Kev Tim Winch donated, saying, uh, donating to say, thanks Mark, your bit with the Winter Spy storyline gave me inspiration to one I am currently giving my players, uh, whose enemy is a cursed animated armour harbouring a demon mm. who seeks vengeance mm. upon the group and using backhand tactics. Mm. Thanks, mate. Wind Spy is still one of my favourite arts we've ever done. Mm, yeah. Still my favourite too, I think. Uh, I like Dimitrov. The return Dimitrov of Dimitrov. Was good. Dimitrov. Dimitrov was great. It was great. Uh, it was just great giving you guys an enemy where it was like, we killed him, he's back. We killed him, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> he's bad, but he's good. Uh, kept him winch again. Uh, what date again. and time did you say again for the character creation stream? Wednesday, Wednesday 6 p.m. BST. This, this Wednesday. Wednesday. And where can you find it? Twitch.tv forward slash DND. We will tweet at High Rollers DND on Twitter. We will, if tweet. ever we, we have any announcement, in general, to be honest, if we're not streaming for any reason, we'll tell you there. If we are streaming, we'll tell you there. Yeah. Details. We would love all of your support yes. and to flood the channel. Please D &D. do, yeah, absolutely, guys, if you can. And if you can't watch it live, watch the VOD, watch it on YouTube, comment on the YouTube video and say, we love high rollers, etc. Just everything you do, just let wizards know that you guys are coming to support them as well as us. Because yeah. they really loved Uncharted Territory yeah, and we they loved were really doing happy it with it and as stuff, well. So. And uh, if you come to the chat, you can maybe convince Mark to let me be a dragon knight. No, <laughs> no. Yeah, we will be reading the chat quite a lot. In, first yeah. Possible. This, yeah. If you ever wanted to sort of interact, like we don't interact with chat on a regular basis in yeah, our normal streams. It's harder streams. for us to do, yeah. So, but Wednesday, because we're doing character creation, there might be a bit more flexibility yeah. We could can. influence our so. decisions a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and also to finish that message, uh, also I want to see how much Kim asks about the new classes like she does with Monk during the streams. Will be great. Oh, Captain Winch, sassy boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and oh, there we go. I think that's. Oh, uh, there it is. I just want to see if it wasn't another one to finish that. Uh, the Game Guy 415. Oh man, Ju took it and a gift for Reynard was a really heartwarming moment. I like I'm how so happy. Uh, <laughs> in her small act of kindness she accidentally creates a rave machine. <laughs> <laughs> also, Korak Dunn got some dragon tail tonight! Hashtag Cormy, hashtag Korak for Kim. Uh, Kim? Corny. King. Korak for King. I'm pretty sure that wasn't, uh, that was an intentional oh, yeah. slip up there. Yeah, yeah. Korak for Kim. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny that Korak doesn't go for the, to his eyes, 16-year-old tiefling when there is a, literally a dragon woman from his own country that he I can get to know. I gave up on that ages ago anyway. Good. That's why I just said, you know, 
Can I Whatevs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch you, Lady Amy. Yeah, you you I, love, I love the idea of you two threatening a fucking silver dragon, like, you better not fucking hurt him, or I'll get you. <laughs> That's how you know I'm serious, yo. <laughs> That's adorable, tiefling child. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sweet, sweet thing. I'll if rip I was off your wings! <laughs> Um, yeah, and you guys didn't thank me for the clothes, so whatever. I did. For the what? Clothes. I didn't get anything. Raynard did. Raynard yeah. did. Tried to. I thanked your back. He was too shocked. He gave you like a... That's, that's not really a thank you, but it's a can thank you. I think the thing is, because I've been watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I was definitely seeing it as like Rosa, who's just like, you know, really me, like just like... Take a gift. Cannot deal with emotion. Yeah. <laughs> Take. This is awkward, goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. Emotion as gift. It's um, very... Um, Anyway, Ace of Thorns has donated. Oh, crikey, it's gone a bit season four of Babylon 5, hasn't it? <laughs> Great to have you guys back, and the new series sounds well. We'll just have to see, won't we? Must tune in for character creation. Meanwhile, nibbles are on me. Hashtag hugs. Nice. Oh. Thank you very much. Uh, a movie man 8 has donated. Never leave again, it made me sad. I donate every week for the as and titty everyone has. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't get that. What? <laughs> well, it's the guy perfect. who always wrote, writes does as, as and titty. Oh. Um, which he's didn't also, hear it. <laughs> yeah, he's got a follow-on donation saying, I forgot to donate the week before you left and comment something witty, but I can't do that, so here's some ass and titty. You hear nice. that now? Force. Nice. Heard it. Loud and clear. Uh, thanks, thanks for that, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Goody man has donated. The beacons are lit! Talisman calls for aid! <laughs> Getting very tense, lovely to see everyone again. Also, hashtag chair for Hazel, hashtag justice for Hazel. Keep up the amazing D&D and may you get many nat 20s. But well, we shall. He's not even on a chair, he's just kneeling. He's just really Mr. Well. Zix Hill entire time. with a ha 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 hundo! Oh, oh, no. No. Thanks for the story, welcome back from the holiday. Thank you, Mr. Zix Hill, for the generous donation. Thank you Thank very you much. Very much. Holy crap. What? Victoria Attis, Art Victoria Artis, uh, ha, ha, Hundo! Oh, man. Uh, I've been That's behind stupid. on episodes for forever, but finally caught up, so this is for all the streams I've missed. Thank you for so much for keeping Thank the story you. going and giving us all such awesome entertainment. You're all beautiful, wonderful people. Cheers to you. You are a beautiful, yes. wonderful person, Victoria Artis. Very generous. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. And then I'll read this other one from Yogg's Body. Hi, guys. Another great stream. I was dragged in for an extra shift today. Had to persuade my manager that I had to finish at four, not at five. Totally <laughs> worked. Nice. 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 I like it. Nice. Mm, God, still Do not it. listen to this person's advice, Chris Trot. Oh, there's only... We're almost there, guys. Almost there. Blind Fish Nated. Will any of you play a Tortle in the new campaign? No. Oh my god, I did look up the, the no. thing for that. I what? might be a Tortle. Can we all be Tortles? Yeah. No. Oh, tortle. Or I was going to be the little frog <gasps> kid. No. Be like a teenage t- no. ninja Tortle. Yes! The DM Vito <laughs> right now. No. I did look at that. Nope. Oh, Grungs. Huh? Grungs. Nope. Oh, what about the little um, frog dudes? Yeah, that's yeah Grungs. 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 No. Um, no fun. Captain no Witch, once again for the last one. Dragon Knight, hashtag justice for Kim. Yes! <laughs> no. There we go, we'll call up. So let me just adjust my DM hat here. No! <laughs> uh, None that's of your it. hashtags will work. Thank <laughs> you very much for all your super generous donations. Very, uh, very tonight. generous. Much appreciated. We're glad to be back. We hope you enjoyed yeah. it. Lots of RP stuff happening. We've got the brand new Dead Reckoning happening on Wednesday. There's loads more merch to come. We'll see you at MCM. There's loads of cool stuff happening. Thank you very much for joining us on the journey that is High Rollers, and we will see you next time. We'll see Big you thanks Wednesday. to uh, Becky. Big thanks to Becky, Thank new you, Becky. stream stream overlord Becky. Stream God. Thank you, stream God Becky. Oh. Um, and yeah, we will see you very soon. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.